Hello everyone, welcome to What If Luffy Got Lost in My Hero Academia World Part 3. Before we start please go support Andrew Ha for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Chapter 11. The Train Station. Everyone has their costumes, right? Remember you don't have permission to wear them out in public yet and don't lose them or anything. Azawa said while looking at Luffy out of the corner of his eye. If anyone was going to lose their costume, it would be Luffy. Right now the whole of Class 1 was waiting for each of their specific trains to come and take them to their internships. Gotcha let's do this Mina and Luffy said excitedly at the same time. Speak properly, it's yes sir. Azawa scolded the two rowdy students. Yes sir. Yasha Azawa just sighed and figured it would be pointless to try and educate Luffy on manners. So Luffy, are you ready? We're not going to see each other for a week. Said Momo a little sad. For as long as she knew Luffy, she has never been apart from him for more than a couple of hours. This chaperoning business started as a chore, but she was going to miss Luffy's antics. Don't cry or anything. Luffy hated crybabies. This just means when we meet each other again it'll be all the better. You sure know how to put a positive spin on things. Momo said when a new train arrived. That's yours, try not to get into too much trouble. Eh? I never get into trouble. Luffy lied as he was going to the train. By Momo Luffy said with a wave, which Momo returned, before getting on the train side by side with Mineta. Rap, let's sit here until we arrive. Mineta said as he hopped on a chair. This prompted Luffy to sit next to him and stare out the window like a little kid. I gotta say, I didn't expect you to intern at Mount Lady's agency. Never thought you'd be that type of guy. Huh? I just wanna learn how she gets free food. Luffy said to the ball-headed boy. After she got free food at the festival, he thought that maybe he could use what he learned at the internship on Sanji. I, Of course. Well, at least I won't have any competition. Mineta said as he started to rub his hands together. The rest of the trip, the boy stayed mostly in silence, sometimes interrupted by Luffy gushing over the scenery, Mineta gushing over heroines, and Luffy eating. The Mount Agency, is this it? Luffy asked as he looked at the office building. The Mount Agency is a multi-story office building, on whose roof two horn-like structures protrude, similar to the ones Mount Lady has. Yep, this is Mount Agency said Mineta as they started going to the entrance door. Since Mount Lady only debuted like 11 months ago, she doesn't have anything big or fancy just yet. As they drew close to the door Mineta could hear his heart pounding from excitement and anxiety, he was getting nervous as he went to open the door. Luffy swung open the glass doors, startling the small student and nearly breaking them. Yo, we're here for the lanternship. H hey. H he means internship. Mineta quickly corrected the straw hat. Good afternoon. One second. The receptionist said as she began calling someone on the phone. Yes, two students are here for the internship. Yes, two. I understand. After she hung up she said. Mount Lady will be here shortly, I ask you to wait in the meantime. The waiting room wasn't anything special, two couches, a plant, and some candy on a coffee table. I'm bored. Luffy said as he was devouring the candy. How much longer? Fortunately for him, that's exactly when the heroine in question arrived. Why you straw hat? Mount Lady said as she pointed a finger at Luffy. Why are you here? I didn't send you an invitation. I'm here for you to teach me how to get free food, Luffy said as he saluted the heroine. Monkey D. Luffy the man who's gonna become the king of the pirates. I am Minoru Mi Mineta was interrupted. I don't care why you're here I didn't even invite you, Mount Lady said with a tick on her forehead. This prompted the receptionist, who was also the secretary, to speak up. Actually, you told me to give him an invite. When? Said Mountain Lady as she started remembering. Flashback. Mount Lady, have you decided on who you are going to invite? The receptionist spoke up when she saw Mount Lady pass by her desk at the entrance. Invite. Mount Lady said as she put a chip in her mouth. Oh, you mean the internship thing? Yes, the internship thing. Have you decided? She said as she pulled up a notepad. I don't really care, just send an invite to every student who looks promising. She said while continuing her walk. Wait, everyone besides the kid who broke his fingers. That freaked me out. Understood. Flashback end. Oh yeah now I remember. Mount Lady said while putting a finger on her chin. But out of every hero, you really chose me. Duh, I am here after all. Luffy stated the obvious. Now teach me. Teach you? Mountain Lady said, baffled by his cheekiness, that's when an idea popped up in her head. Okay, fine. I'll teach you. A Luffy celebrated as he started following Mountain Lady to her main office, Mineta following close behind. By the way, I'm Minoru Mineta it's gonna be great working under you, Mineta said excitedly for a variety of reasons. You'll see, you damn brat you're gonna regret ever wanting to come here, the pro thought with an evil smile on her face. Mineta was ignored. After arriving at her office break room, they settled in an available room with two beds. They put on their hero costumes. 
The office building was pretty barren from what the boy saw, there weren't too many employees, besides the occasional janitor and office worker, and this surprised Mineta the most. Wasn't she supposed to be a popular pro or something? How come there's no one here? He asked more rhetorically than anything else. Who cares? Luffy responded as they exited their shared room. I just want to get free food. Is food all you think about? Mineta asked seriously. No, I also think about becoming the king of the pirates, Luffy responded which prompted Mineta to sigh. Well, if there's anyone who can become whatever that is, then it's probably you. Mineta said as they approached the main office door. Thanks, grapes, Luffy said as he slapped the smaller student on the back, making him faceplant into the wooden floor. After opening the door, Luffy and a slightly angry Mineta were greeted by Mount Lady and a bunch of cleaning supplies. Huh? Listen up if you want to become a pro, you have to know how to do tedious labor. That means cleaning, scrubbing, washing the windows, etc. Mount Lady said as she handed the two boys aprons and brooms. She didn't mean to get Mineta involved, but truthfully she didn't care. Have fun. Wait I came here to learn how to get free food I don't want to work, Luffy said in protest, Mineta was conflicted, he didn't want to be a janitor, but at the same time, he didn't want to refuse Mount Lady. But this is part of your training. Mount Lady said with her back turned, accentuating her curvature. If you want to learn you have to do this. Whatever you say Mineta agreed as he began sweeping away. Luffy was still contemplating for a couple of seconds before arriving at a conclusion. TSK. Fine, but you better teach me soon after he began sweeping very chaotically, making more of a mess than there initially was. How on your dreams, hunk. You shouldn't have messed with me at the festival, Mount Lady thought evilly as she started eating a brand new pack of chips and looking at her phone. To be honest, Mineta was doing most of the work, and that included Luffy's mess. Luffy wasn't much of a help. Washing? More like breaking the glass that are just very aggressively washing one spot and leaving the rest of the window dirty. Throwing out the trash. He just threw it out the window, most of the time landing on a car, making the car driver have a mild heart attack. Cleaning the dust. More like sleeping near the dust. Mineta having to wake him up multiple times so that he can do his job, some of the times Mount Lady got a few good hits in while he was asleep. And after a day of nothing being learned. Oh good morning the cleaning supplies are right there. Mount Lady said as she pointed at a janitor's closet. Eh? Again? I thought you were going to teach me Luffy said angrily. I am teaching you. This is all part of your training. Mount Lady lied with a smile on her face. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date with a cake. No way today, you'll teach me. Whether you like it or not. Luffy said as he grabbed Mount Lady like a sack of potatoes and began going down the stairs. Mineta was following close behind and freaking out a little bit. Huh? Put me down Mount Lady said as she punched Luffy as hard as she could, unfortunately for her, it didn't do much damage. No way in hell am I teaching you something, our rep. What are you doing? She's gonna have us expelled or worse, she's gonna make us go home, Mineta said more worried about Luffy ruining his chances with her. Stop struggling. We're just going on parole. Luffy said as he neared the entrance door. You mean patrol? No way Mount Lady said before noticing the receptionist. Hey do something I'm being kidnapped, the receptionist just looked at her with a blank expression. I don't get paid enough for this. And just like that, she went back to playing solitaire on her computer. Why you I'll remember this Mount Lady said as Luffy exited the door and started looking for a fast food restaurant. After a couple of minutes of walking, with Mount Lady struggling to get off of Luffy, she decided to see if this guy knew where he was going. Do you even know where you are going? Mount Lady asked, frustrated. She gave up trying to get free from him, it was like his hands were made of iron or something. Yeah I just gotta find a restaurant Luffy said as he began walking in a random direction. Random civilian saw the famous heroine being carried around like a sack of potatoes and wondered if she was in danger, but seeing as how she didn't struggle, they figured everything was fine. Ugh, at least put me down. People are looking at us weirdly and I don't need any drama. Mount Lady said which prompted Luffy to put her down, and the second he did she did a 180 and went back to her agency. Damn brats. Eh? Luffy said as she watched Mount Lady go back. No you don't and with an extended arm, Luffy pulled Mount Lady back in his embrace, bridal style. Put me down, Mount Lady said as she began to struggle, but stopped when she heard her tummy rumble. Damn it. Ah see you're hungry and I'm sure I can find it. Luffy said as he began to look at his surroundings before quickly locating a Raymond shop. I see it, huh? Mount Lady looked where Luffy was looking and her mouth began salivating. Fine but just this once, okay. Yes yes yes, Luffy said quickly as he put down Mount Lady and began going to the Raymond shop. Meanwhile, Mineta just looked at the scene in front of him in disbelief. He couldn't believe Luffy got to carry Mount Lady and not be reprimanded for pervy actions. If he ever tried to do this, he would get sent to the police. So, how do we do this? Luffy asked Mount Lady as they approached the restaurant. 
How do I make them give me free food? Ugh, can't believe I'm doing this. Mount Lady said very audibly. Let's just see if the clerk is a girl or not. Why does that matter? Luffy asked which made Mount Lady genuinely surprised. You can't be serious. Mount Lady asked, this prompted Mineta to speak up. Oh, he's serious all right. He lives with a total hot eye, and I didn't see him as much as turn pink near her or any other girls. Mineta said, which captured the heroine's attention. Really? Mount Lady said before deciding to test it out. Eh? What are you doing? Can't walk. Luffy asked Mountain Lady who was currently clinging to him in a very scandalous position. Mineta could feel the blood drip from his nose. Uh, nothing at all. Mount Lady said after a couple more seconds. This never happened to me before. Can you test it on me? Mineta asked. At lost, squirt. Mount Lady said not even turning to him. Nobody ever resisted my charms before, even a little blush appeared sometimes on even the toughest of heroes. After arriving at the Raymond shop, Mount Lady noticed the clerk, who was a female. Okay let's see. What the? Good Luffy said, already in the shop and approaching the counter rapidly, forgetting about his mission. Hey I thought you wanted free food, you idiot. Mount Lady said which prompted Luffy to come back to her. Okay, let's go outside. After going to a fairly secluded area, Mount Lady started analyzing Luffy. Besides your giant X car, you have a good build, plenty of muscle. She said as she caressed his arms and his chest. Thanks Luffy responded to the compliment. WW what are you doing? Mineta asked as he started nose bleeding. H he's a minor. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to do anything. Mount Lady said as she looked at Luffy's facial expression which only held a smile, not even a slight blush. Wow, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, but still. The clothes are nice, very commanding. She said as he looked at his coat. Besides the sandals, it's not a bad fit. Pretty face, but you are in need of a haircut. Mount Lady said as she ruffled his hair. This spooked Luffy a bit, eh? No way Luffy said a bit offended and scared. Look, I teach you, not the other way around. Mount Lady said trying to sound authoritative, but after Luffy not budging an inch, she tried a different approach. Sigh. Why don't you want a haircut? Nami always cuts my hair I don't want anybody else besides her, Luffy said as she remembered Nami punching Luffy multiple times to get him to stand still and cut his hair. Besides, I have had this haircut ever since I can remember. Nami? Who's she? Your girlfriend. Mineta asked curiously. She's my navigator I don't want anybody else besides her Luffy said it as a fact. You're really leaning on this whole pirate thing, aren't you? Mount Lady said as she got close to him again. Fine, we'll keep your hair, some girls do like that messy look after all. BTW disclaimer, I am a guy so I don't know anything about girls, everything you read in this chapter is purely from my own experience and rom-coms, so don't take any advice I put here, cause honestly I'm just guessing. I'm guessing the straw hat is also off limits. Mount Lady said as she looked at the iconic straw hat dangling from his neck. Obviously Luffy said angrily as he put it back on his head. I don't go anywhere without it, that's fine, weirdly that hat suits you. Mount Lady said, which made Luffy's mood change. Shishishi thanks Luffy said happily. So, now what? Now, we see what you can do. Go in there and charm her. Mount Lady said as she started pushing Luffy to the door. Eh? How? Just do your best. Mount Lady said as she pushed him into the Raymond shop. I just want to see what he can do. Don't think that was the best idea. Mineta said with a nose stuffed with wipes. Luffy is he's not the smartest guy I know. He can't be that bad right? Mount Lady said as she peeked through the window and looked at Luffy. Now, as Luffy sat down, the clerk in her early twenties came to get his order. Good morning. What would you like to order? She said with a smile on her face. Food, I want free food, Luffy said as he smacked the table and scared the girl a little bit. Um, he excuse me. She said as she looked at the client who bore a serious expression. I said, I want free food Luffy repeated himself, which just made the girl more scared. Why are you trembling? I eyes this are robbery. She asked, thinking that the young man was mugging her. What are you talking about? I just want free food. Luffy said confused with a bit of drool coming from his mouth, but this just made the girl more scared. He does he mean that he'll steal our food? She thought as she started sweating. Or worse, I is he going to eat us? Hey what's the hold up? Just give me the food Luffy said as he heard his stomach growling. I won't ask again. Luffy meant that he'll leave the restaurant, but the girl interpreted it as something else. Ah help he's trying to eat me the clerk yelled as she started freaking out. This made the restaurant owner come out. He was a man with a big build and a lot of muscle, smaller than all might, but not by much. What is it pumpkin? He asked his daughter as she ran to him and started crying. Who did this to you? HH he said he'll eat me she said as she pointed a finger at Luffy while crying. What? I didn't say that Luffy said as he started waving his hands around. 
I swear, you come into my restaurant, threaten to eat my daughter, and then lie to my face. He said as he approached the teen. Thank you for choosing our Raymond shop. Wait sadly for Luffy, he got punched in the face so hard that he flew outside the restaurant. Ow, and stay out he heard the father yell from inside the shop and various chatter from the customers. Well, looks like he is that bad. Mount Lady said, baffled at the events that just transpired. Who knew you could cause this much chaos in such a short amount of time? It didn't work. Luffy said as he nursed the bump he had on his head. They said I was trying to eat them. Yeah, maybe next time try not to be so aggressive. Mount Lady said sarcastically. Minetta follows from behind. Amrap, you good? Minetta asked Luffy. I'm fine. So, how do I make them give me free food? Luffy asked Mount Lady who was looking around for another shop. You need a lot of learning to do. She said, then she spotted another small fast food restaurant. Ah had just watched the master at work. Luffy watched as Mount Lady walked into the fast food restaurant and not even five minutes later, she came back with two packed meals. Wow awesome Luffy said as he got his share from the heroine. All in a day's work kid. Mount Lady said as she began scarfing down her food. W where's mine? Asked Mineta as he looked at the two of them eating. Oh, forgot about you. Said Mount Lady which completely shattered Mineta. But next time for sure. For some reason, I doubt that. Mineta said. So are we gonna go on patrol or something? I don't really go on patrol. Said Mount Lady as she started going back to her agency. It's kinda hard using my quirk in a city. So, then why don't you go to the countryside? Asked Mineta. Duh, because here is where all the fame and money is at Mount Lady said it with her hands waving at the city. This made Mineta sweat drop. After a quick walk back to her agency, everything went back to normal. And by that, I mean that Mineta was cleaning while Luffy was dozing off. And just like that another day went by. The next day. Alright kid, I have some ideas you can try. Mount Lady said as she was eating a pack of chips. Right now she and Luffy were chilling on the couch while Mineta was forced to continue his cleaning job. For what? Luffy asked as he looked away from the TV. For your training, duh. Mount Lady said which immediately improved Luffy's mood. For real? Awesome Luffy said as he got up from the couch. What is it? You'll practice on me and I'll tell you where you go wrong. Mount Lady said as she got a chocolate bar from the table counter. Look, your goal is to make me give this to you. Oh, okay Luffy said as he got face to face with her. Give me the food. Hey wrong. Mount Lady said while making an X with her arms. Don't say directly what you want, lead them into it and don't be so forceful. Oh oh, okay. Luffy said, a bit taken aback. Wow, that's a cool chocolate bar you have can I have it? Hey wrong. Mount Lady said as she did the same gesture. It's better than last time, but you still said you wanted. Try again. Oh okay. Luffy said a bit surprised again, he felt like a stone was placed on his heart, but he couldn't tell why. You know, I'm super hungry if only there was someone who had some food right now. Hey wrong. Mount Lady did the same gesture again. Well, you got over your biggest problem, so that's good but Mount Lady stopped for a second. Where are you crying? Huh? Luffy said then looked down and saw a couple of tears go past his face and hit the ground. He quickly wiped them away. I I don't know. Look, crying is a big turn off when it comes to seduction. Mount Lady said with a hand on her chin, thinking that Luffy's crying was part of the seduction. Well, I guess if you can play the pity card it could work, but too much, and people will just try to avoid you, try again. Okay. Luffy said then thought for a bit, his face slowly becoming redder and redder. I don't know, can you give me a hint or something? A hint? Lem see. Mount Lady said as she thought for a couple of seconds. Try flirting. What's that? Luffy said with a tilt of his head. Sigh. Of course, try complimenting me, flattery can go a long way, say something nice about me. Mount Lady explained the best way she could think of to Luffy. Okay. Luffy said and after thinking for a bit. I liked it when you gave me food. A wrong Mount Lady said again. I meant about how I look, not what I did. Most people, you won't even remember their names when you try to seduce them, so you have to say something nice about their appearance and stop crying, if it didn't work once it's not gonna work again. Ah, sorry. I don't know why I do it. Luffy said as he wiped his new set of tears away and tried again. About how you look. Luffy said as he looked at her from top to bottom. Yeah, like what you see. Mount Lady said it while moving into a hexier pose. She didn't even realize that Luffy managed to spark a reaction out of her. Not really. Luffy said innocently, which made Mount Lady Sucker punch him, if he wasn't rubber, then he probably would have lost a few teeth there. Ow what was that for? Use your words more carefully next time. Mount Lady said as she went back like nothing even happened. Okay, so clearly flirting isn't your strong suite. You could try to make their heart race. What does that mean? Luffy asked again. 
it means that you should try to get into their personal space, surprise them, do anything to get their adrenaline pumping, and then they won't be able to think about anything else besides what you're saying. Mount Lady explained the best she could. Ha, it'll never work on me though, I can be pretty tough. Surprise them huh? Luffy said before, very quickly, appearing inches away from Mount Lady's face. Ah uh, Mount Lady said, surprised at the sudden distance between her face and Luffy's or better said, lack thereof. Wwa. Hey, I'm done cleaning the stairs, can I start the real TR? Mineta cut himself off when he saw Luffy straddling Mount Lady, looking like they were about to do something indecent. Why you damn bastard? Mineta said as he ran out of the room while covering his bloody nose with his palm. Give me the candy. Luffy said with an even tone as he was getting closer and closer. Please. H here just get away Mount Lady stammered as she put the chocolate bar between her face and Luffy's. The AI did it Luffy congratulated by eating his reward, now sitting on the other side of Mount Lady. And believe that worked on me. Mount Lady said as she checked her heartbeat, it was going at an insane pace. Might want to fix your tone though, felt like a robot was asking me. Thanks Luffy said as he ate the bar with a smile on his face. Now I can get free food. The thing you just did only works in specific scenarios, so maybe some more training. Mount Lady said as she got the blush to disappear from her face and her heart under control. She looked at Luffy's face. And still, not even a blush. The next day. Luffy was the last one to get out of bed, after putting on his hero clothes and going to the main office, he was greeted by Mount Lady as well as two other heroes. Hi, I'm hungry. Luffy said while going to the coffee table to take some of Mount Lady's pizza. Hey don't steal my food, Mount Lady scolded Luffy. Get some from the fridge, but it's already here, the fridge is too far away. Luffy said while eating before noticing the two extra heroes and a familiar face. Hey ears, I have a name Jiru said angrily. And why are you here? I thought you got like 5000 offers or something. Are you really gonna settle for her? Hey Mount Lady said in response to the mean comment while drinking some coffee. Damn brats, just wait till you're older. You say it like you're 60 or something. Kamui Wood said, him being one of the heroes. I feel like I'm getting older. Especially with him. Mount Lady said while pointing at Luffy. Oh, yeah are you gonna teach me more now? Luffy said as he finished his second pizza already. I'm ready. You showed some promise. Mount Lady said to the straw hat. I'll see what I can do. Oh, me too me too, Mineta said from his spot where he was washing the dishes. Yeah, you definitely have no shot. Mount Lady said, this made Mineta feel broken. Training. Death Arms asked, interested in the conversation. What training? Knowing Luffy, it'll probably be something about food. Jiru said while twirling her earlobes. Yeah we had training yesterday and the day before that Luffy said like a happy kid who just got his Christmas present. See? What did I tell you? Jiru said. She went over my entire body Luffy said which made Mount Lady spit the coffee she was drinking. Huh? Ask everybody besides Luffy and Mount Lady. It's not like that Mount Lady said, trying her best to fix Luffy's mess. Out of all the things to say. Yeah, she said she liked my hat and my muscles. Luffy said with a smile, not knowing the mess he was putting Mount Lady in. Shut up Mount Lady said with a slight blush. They're gonna get the wrong idea. I know you're a seductress and everything, but you do know that he's a minor right? Death Arm said, thinking if he should report his friend or not. Do I need to take you into custody? Kamui Wood said just as surprised as everyone else. I told you it's not like that Mount Lady said, slightly panicking. Stop laughing, shishishi sorry. Ow Luffy yelped when he felt Mount Lady punch him across the face. Great boy tell them it's just a misunderstanding. Mount Lady said when she finally remembered that she had two interns. I have no shot. Mineta said while rocking back and forth in his corner. This made Mount Lady even more frustrated. Am rep, didn't know you had it in you. Jiru said with a slightly impressed face. For the last time it's not like that Mount Lady said. He just asked me to teach him how to get free food and I had to analyze him, that's it. Don't say analyze like you weren't just checking his body out. Kamui Wood said with a sweat drop. And, out of all the things to teach him, you thought that seduction was the best. Hey I don't come to your agency and tell you how to teach your brats Mount Lady said when she felt her blood pressure finally calm down. Besides, that's not why you are even here, is it? Ah yes, I've nearly forgotten. Death Arm said as he attracted all the interns and pro heroes attention. I was assigned a mission by the hero agency and I think that I may need some help. Mission? Sounds cool, Luffy said as he already imagined himself crawling through air vents, disabling bomb and saving the world. Like a spy. Not really. Kamui Wood shattered Luffy's fantasy instantly. What's the mission? Mount Lady said as she got into pro hero mode. The local gang has been making weaves at the southwest dock, no pun intended. We heard that they are about to strike a huge arms deal that will make them into a power that is too much for the local police to handle. I was assigned this mission by the hero agency, but I asked Kamui Woods to help in case a hostage situation arises. 
Death Arm said as he looked at Woods. My quirk makes it easier to deal with hostages, seeing as how I can immobilize them easily. He said as he quickly activated his wooden quirk, making several branches sprout out of his arms. Who Luffy said with stars in his eyes. I am confident I can handle any threat that appears, but on the off chance that they are hiding something that I can't handle, I am going to need your help. Death Arm said as he finished his debriefing. So you want me as backup? Mount Lady asked with a raised eyebrow. Precisely. Death Arms answered her question. Then we're going Luffy said, thinking it was his decision to make. This made Mineta have a small panic attack and Jiru to just sigh. It's not up to you Mount Lady snapped at Luffy. I don't know if I can, I am pretty busy. This made the other heroes look at the barren room that didn't have even a single employee in it. With what? With eating. Kamui Wood said, which prompted Mount Lady to knock him on the head. Ow, you deserved that. Jiru said to the hero who was rubbing his head. Come on please Luffy said with a pleading face. He was getting tired of staying in this office building all day. It's gonna be fun, we aren't going there to have fun. Death Arms lightly scolded Luffy, who was getting into Mount Lady's personal space. This is a serious mission. Please Luffy pleaded as he got closer and closer to her, making her back up into an armchair. Please. Ugh, fine just get off of me Mount Lady said as she threw Luffy to the floor. Damn punk. What made it worse is that she could hear Luffy celebrate. Well, that's one way to convince a lady. Jiru said, which made Mineta start writing notes. It's not gonna work for you though. Mineta was once again depressed. Glad you decided to join us. Death Arm said as he extended his hand for her to shake. The mission it's gonna happen tonight at 8pm, so be ready. Sure. Mount Lady said as she shook his hand. By the way, where is the dock located? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Death Arm said. The docks in Hosu. The docks. 750. Wow, the ships are made of iron. Luffy said with a look of admiration and a smile. But quickly that smile disappeared. What, this is your first time seeing a ship or something? Mineta said, not noticing Luffy's expression. He was slightly scarred at being here, even if he was mostly on the sidelines. Nah, just never seen one made of iron before. Luffy said as he was going back to the other heroes. Well, I guess Tra Guy's ship is made from metal too. Hey kids don't wander off, the deal is gonna start any second and we need to catch them in the act, otherwise we won't have proof. Death Arm said. Sorry Luffy said loudly as he started running towards them. Don't yell I gotta focus. Jiru said as she put her ear jacks into the ground. Right now they were on a small warehouse, not too far away from the main warehouse, but far enough away so that they don't get caught. This rooftop gives us a good vantage point, so if anything happens we'll be ready to back you guys up. Mount Lady said as she was munching on a granola bar. Give me some of that Luffy said as he looked at Mount Lady eating. How on your dreams kid. Mount Lady said, which made Luffy gasp in shock. Stop eating Kamui Wood scolded the heroine. This could get dangerous fast. Quit your whining, I'm only here for backup anyway. Mount Lady said as she continued eating. Besides, I'm strong enough to take care of myself. That's not the point Kamui Wood said angrily. She was way too carefree in her opinion. That reminds me. Death Arm said, before things could get too out of hand. If there are any weaknesses, now would be a good time to share them. He said addressing the interns. If it wasn't obvious then loud sounds. Jiru said as she continued listening for any sign of movement. My scalp bleeds if I take too many balls. Mineta also piped in. Water. Luffy said nonchalantly, which made a couple of adults surprised and some angry. You idiot if you knew that water is your weak point, then why did you insist on coming to the docks? Mount Lady said as she shook him back and forth. Water. That's a random weakness. Kamui Wood said with a hand on his chin. It's not all water Luffy said, which managed to calm Mount Lady a bit. Just salt water. Idiot don't you realize that we are near the ocean. Mount Lady said even angrier than before. Guys I hear footsteps. Jiru said, which prompted everyone to pay attention to her. 20, 30 guys. All carrying heavy weaponry by the sound of their footsteps. All right, just like we planned. Me and Woods go in and take care of them while you remain here with the children. Death Arm said as he ran quietly towards the warehouse, Kamui Woods followed close behind. Eh? I can't go. Luffy asked as he watched the pros do their thing. Obviously, you don't have your hero license yet. Mount Lady said as she looked at the warehouse with her binoculars. Then what was the point of coming here? Luffy said bewildered at the fact that he came here for nothing. You tell me, you're the one that dragged me here. Mount Lady said casually with a grin on her face. Ha, sweet karma. Ha. Uh, said Jiru as she checked her phone. What's up? Mineta asked as he tried to look at her phone. He forgot his. It's nothing, it's just a weird message Midoriya just sent. Jiru said as she put her phone away and looked at the warehouse where Kamui Woods was coming out with a bunch of hostages. After about five minutes Death Arms and Kamui Woods finally came out with the last gang member. Can I go now? 
Luffy asked for the twentieth time. For the last time, no. Mount Lady said for the twentieth time. It doesn't even matter because they're coming out. I was summoned here for nothing. Damn it. Luffy said with the expression of a hurt puppy. Came all the way here for nothing. Why are you even sulking? This is good x cheer was interrupted by an explosion from the city side, that explosion was followed by the sounds of civilians screaming. What the, stay here, kids. Mount Lady said as she looked at what was causing the chaos. It's probably just a random villain causing trouble. Another hero will soon arrest them, no worries. Yes some action Luffy said as he started running towards the chaos. But he soon stopped in his tracks. Hey where do you think your ass is going? Mount Lady said as she quickly followed after him, the other students, out of pure panic, decided to follow after her. You're in a lot of trouble, Punk Mount Lady said as she put a hand on Luffy's shoulder, she was about to scold him some more, but stopped when she saw his expression. Huh. I know this aura. Luffy said with a serious tone. It's the same as that bird guy's aura from the amusement park. You mean the freakish monster thing from the USJ. Mineta said as he started panicky, this also prompted Jiru to use her quirk. Would you follow me? Mount Lady asked. I thought I made it clear to stay back, yeah, but these ones are weaker. Luffy said as he prepared himself, ignoring the heron. What are you guys going on about? Mount Lady asked, confused, but then looked in surprise when she saw a pale pink slim monster with an exposed brain running towards her at super speed. What the hell is that? That's Nomu it's way faster than the other one, Mineta said as he tried to run away, but then realized that he's petrified in fear. Ah can't move, crap, it's coming here fast, Jiru said as she tried to steal herself. Do something guys. Oh, right. Mount Lady said as she got over her initial shock. Stay behind me. She tried activating her quirk but stopped when she heard Luffy say. Dear second, don't you dare do anything I can have you arrested. Mount Lady said in an attempt to stop Luffy from doing something stupid. Unfortunately for her, stupid is Luffy's middle name, besides D. Don't worry, he's fast, but I'm faster. Luffy said as he put a hand in front of himself and one reared back, as if he was aiming. Gomu Gomu no jet pistol. Diego rep Mineta cheered Luffy on when he sent Nomu flying. Kick his ass. You're not supposed to cheer him on Mount Lady snapped at Mineta, who cowered in fear, before turning to Jiru. Go tell the other guys about the situation here and take the squirt with you. It's getting back up. Luffy said when he noticed him running back at full speed towards them. Good, then stay back, I can take care of H. Mount Lady was interrupted again by Nomu appearing inches away from her face, after she instinctively put her arms up to brace herself, she noticed that the Nomu wasn't moving, and that a shiny black hand was stopping him. Huh. Told you it was fast. Luffy said from her side. When she turned she saw Luffy holding out his hand in front of him, becoming black halfway through. Don't worry, I'll protect you. I'm supposed to say that. Mount Lady said. Quickly after, Luffy launched another just pistol at the still unmoving Nomu. Another one's coming she said after hearing an unhuman roar. Yeah, I can sense it. Luffy said as he looked to the sky, where a Nomu, with angel-like wings, was flying towards them. I'll take care of the fast one you take care of the other one. Don't order me around Mount Lady said as she activated her quirk and started swatting the flying Nomu away like it was a fly. Back with the other heroes, they were too distracted with hero work to notice the commotion the Nomus were causing, well they were until they saw Mount Lady activating her quirk. But then they saw the two students run at them. What's wrong? Why is Mount Lady fighting? Death Arms panicked, if there is someone strong enough for Mount Lady to activate her quirk, then they could be in trouble. I I it's the Noma said Mineta who was having a panic attack. Villains. Mount Lady and Luffy are fighting them right now, but they need help said Jiru, who was starting to hyperventilate. She was confident that Luffy could beat one of those things, but too. She wasn't so sure. All right, calm down, just breathe. Kamui Wood said, trying to get the kids in check. In a battle the moment you start panicking then that's the moment you lose. You stay with them and the criminals, I'll go check on them. Death Arm said as he began running to the action. Meanwhile, with Mount Lady. Damn, this guy's too nimble. She said as she tried to catch the flying Nomu. The creature wasn't small by any means, but Mount Lady trying to catch him was the same as a person trying to catch a hyperactive bee. He just keeps getting back up. Luffy said in slight frustration, he had been fighting the Nomu for a while now, sure he was holding back but still. Gotta end this now. Thought Luffy and Mount Lady at the same time. Luffy managed to land a killer uppercut on his Nomu, sending him flying into the air, Luffy following after him. Mount Lady stopped swatting the Nomu away and decided that a direct hit might work best. Fortunately, she got the perfect opportunity to make an assault when the Nomu that Luffy was fighting hit hers. Making them momentarily stop mid-flight. Perfect, Bill Mount Lady said as she hocked back her arm, preparing for a massive haymaker. Omu Gomu no Luffy said already in gear 3 as he prepared for a devastating blow. 
Did Elephant Gun both Mount Lady and Luffy said at the same time as they each punched the Nomus, their giant hands fist bumped and sandwiching the Nomus in the middle. S they don't need any help. Death Arm said as he watched the Nomus fall into the ground. Mount Lady deactivating her quirk and Luffy's fist now back to normal, they each approached the Nomu. That was awesome, Luffy said with stars in his eyes. I know right Mount Lady matched Luffy's excitement, getting closer to Luffy. The way we both hit them at the same time it was perfect. Yeah I bet it looked cool too, Luffy said as he grabbed the heroine's hands and started celebrating. Mount Lady still riding the high, didn't object even a bit. Wow, didn't know you guys were such great friends. Death Arm said as he interrupted their victory dance. I it's not like that Mount Lady said, embarrassed. She didn't even realize the cringy dance she was doing until Death Arms interrupted them. Just tie these guys up. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Death Arm said with a slight smirk face as he got some rope from his utility belt. Woods is with the kids and the gang members so they should be fine. I do wonder, where did these guys even come from? Mount Lady said with a hand on her chin which made Luffy light up. There's only one way to find out Luffy said before running full speed into town, using his hockey to see if there are any other nomus. No you idiot Mount Lady said as she ran after him. You better hope I don't catch you. Death Arms just watched their antics with a bead of sweat rolling down his forehead before looking down at the two creatures. What are these things? Now with Wood's team, the interns started to relax when they saw Mount Lady go back to her original form. Looks like everything is under control. Why yeah, but if they have even more of those guys. Mineta said as he started biting his fingernails. Just stop. Jiru said to Mineta. It's fine, we're surrounded by pros and Luffy, so I'm sure we'll be fine. All right. Of course. Kamui Wood said, wondering why she put Luffy on the same level as the other pros. But Luffy and Mount Lady. I can sense them, Luffy said as he began running towards the Nomu's aura. Huh? Why are they here? Slow down, Mount Lady said as she was gasping for air. Who are you even talking about? Some guys I know. Luffy said as he came to a stop and looked at a massive fire in the distance. They're close by. Wait. Don't run again, Mount Lady said as she finally caught up to Luffy. You do understand that I can have you arrested for using your quirk, right? I don't care. Luffy said as he began running towards his friend's auras. My friends are in danger, I have to help them. Damn it Luffy Mount Lady said as she began running after him again. This idiot has no self-preservation. After about five more minutes of running, Luffy reached the place where their auras were coming from, but he couldn't see them. So we ran all the way here for nothing. Mount Lady said as she was gasping for air. This whole thing was a waste of time, I don't even know why you thought they were here. No, they're around here somewhere, just can't see them. Luffy said as he looked around. Soon he got an idea. Hold tight, huh? was all that the heroine managed to say before feeling Luffy's arm wrap around her stomach multiple times and his other arm reaching for a building top. What are you doy? She didn't manage to say anything else because Luffy was going at high speed towards the roof, Mount Lady following close behind. Um, let's see. Luffy said as he began looking around for his friends and unwrapping his arm from Mount Lady. What the hell Mount Lady said as she knocked Luffy on the head. Don't ever do that again. I'm sorry, but I couldn't waste time. Luffy said not even phased by her punch. After a couple more seconds of looking around, they spotted Endeavor's fire. Ha oh, look they're there, Endeavor. What's he doing here? Mount Lady said as she watched Endeavor approach a couple of pro heroes, students and an infamous villain. Wait, his thaw Mount Lady felt like she was having deja vu. Don't you dare you bastard, wee Luffy said as he jumped from the building. He was having too much fun in Mount Lady's opinion. Gomu Gomu no balloon Luffy said as he filled himself with air as he braced for impact. You're gonna give me a heart attack. Mount Lady said as she got off of Luffy's inflated body. She found herself right next to the hero killer. Mount Lady. Luffy. Endeavor, a couple of random heroes and Luffy's classmates said at the same time when they finally noticed who it was that jumped from the building. Aw oh crap. You guys already caught the Nomu. Luffy said in disappointment. I came here for nothing. I already told you that, you idiot Mount Lady scolded his intern. It didn't really affect Luffy. Class rep. Todoroki said as he watched Luffy being scolded by Mount Lady. What's he doing here? One hell of a class rep. Said an elderly hero in a yellow and white hero costume. Straw hat. Endeavor muttered under his breath. How did he know? Uh. Luffy said as he suddenly did in 180 and looked to the sky. Five seconds later another Nomu appeared. Another one with wings. Mount Lady said as she braced herself. Fortunately for her, the Nomu wasn't aiming for her, but instead Izuku got caught in the Nomu's claws. He's bleeding said a random heroine. He must be trying to escape. Greeny Luffy said as he prepared to jump after him, but stopped when he saw out of the corner of his eye, the restrained villain suddenly moved. Huh. A hero killer managed to free himself with a hidden knife, he very quickly managed to lick some of the creature's blood, paralyzing it mid-flight. The word hero has lost all meaning in this society. 
The world is overrun by fakes and criminals just like you, who chase pity dreams, you must all be purged. Wow Awesome Luffy said with pure excitement at the fact that the hero killer managed to save Izuku, not realizing that the guy who just saved Izuku was an infamous villain. Unbeknownst to him, every hero and sidekick suddenly put their guard up. Everything that I do is to create a stronger society, Stain said as he killed the flying Nomu. But Shigaraki. Hey 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 why did he have to go and kill that Nomu? Shigaraki said in frustration as he watched with his binoculars. Right now he was standing on the top of a building with his right hand man, watching from afar. And why is that stretchy brat here? This is a mess why do things never go the way I want them to? Shigaraki said as he began rapidly scratching his neck. Back with Luffy. Brady saved Greeny Luffy said as he began walking towards them. Stop, Straw Hat, the elderly hero said. He took him as a hostage, he's the hero killer. Do. Luffy said before watching Endeavor flare to life and prepare a fiery assault, but he was stopped by the same elderly hero. Endeavor Stain said as he got up from his crouched position, his cloth mask falling from his face. You false hero. He has no nose, Luffy said as he pointed to the hero killer. How can he even breathe? I'll make this right. Stain said as he emanated a powerful intimidation effect, powerful enough even for Endeavor. These streets must run with the blood of Hippocrates. Hero I will reclaim that word. He wants to be a hero. Luffy said with a confused expression, he was the only one that was- Come on just try and stop me, you fakes there is only one man I'll let kill me, Stain said as he took a step forward, his speech becoming more and more desperate and powerful. All Might is worthy, okay. Luffy said after about five seconds of silence, completely unfazed. Why are y'all standing around? Isn't he a bad guy? I think he's out cold. Endeavor said after noticing the blade Stain used to kill the Nomu fall from his hand, still shocked from his speech. Oh man I wanted to fight him. Luffy said as he approached the hero killer without a care in the world. Hey Greeny, you okay? Bell Luffy. Mount Lady said bewildered by the fact that he wasn't even remotely phased. Um, yeah. Izuku said as he slowly got up. Thanks to Luffy's carefree demeanor, he managed to recover quickly. Damn, why the hell am I standing here doing nothing? Endeavor thought as he forced himself to recover. A teenager has a stronger will than me. Who the hell is this kid? Gran Torino thought as Luffy chatted with Izuku without a care in the world. So, who's this guy anyway? Luffy said as he came face to face with a passed out hero killer. Is he dead? And no, just passed out. Izuku said as he reluctantly checked his pulse. W wait what are you doing here Luffy? I was in the area and I wanted to fight, Luffy said as he threw a punch in the air. Of course you did. Izuku said while sweat dropping. Never change Luffy. The next day at the Hosu hospital. Hey guys Luffy said as he opened the door to Ieda, Izuku and Todoroki's room. How are you guys doing? Luffy? I'm surprised to see you here. Izuku said from his hospital bed. He and the other students were bandaged and in patient clothing. I can say the same thing. Said Mount Lady as she entered after Luffy. If it weren't for you I wouldn't be dragged into this whole mess. Give me a break, I was bored standing around your house doing nothing. Luffy said annoyed with hearing the same lecture from Mount Lady for the 26th time. It's not my house, it's an agency Mount Lady snapped angrily. I'm gonna be so happy when you leave. Luffy might make the best hero or the worst. Izuku thought as he watched Luffy and Mount Lady bicker like an old married couple. Oh? So the injured Yaojins are awake. The elderly hero said as he entered the room with another hero beside him. Gran Torino Izuku said with a smile. And Manuel too. Iida said less happy, he was riddled with guilt. Gran Torino? Can't say I've ever heard of that hero before. Mount Lady said, which notified the other heroes of her and Luffy's presence. Must not be popular. Watch your mouth, young lady. Gran Torino half-heartedly scolded her. The straw hat teenager, what's his deal? Why a dog Luffy said when he noticed the chief of police enter the room. This is the chief of police, Kenji Tsurigam. Gran Torino informed the students. Wow, are you like a cousin of Dogstorm? Luffy asked. Didn't know there were minks in this world. Luffy, watch your mouth, he's the chief of police. Mount Lady said. Even though she was pretty rude most of the time, she still had some resemblance of respect. What's that? Luffy asked which made everyone sweat drop. After a long-winded explanation of what happened with the hero killer, repercussions, a heated argument with the chief of police and Todoroki and a bow from the chief of police, everybody said their piece. Wait, so I gotta keep this a secret? Well, almost everyone. Yes young man, if the media were to find out we would have no choice but to arrest you. Even though you didn't fight the hero killer, I ask that you don't tell anybody. The chief of police asked Luffy. Well, that secret's as good as public knowledge now that Luffy knows about it. Izuku thought with a scared expression. Can I tell Momo? Luffy asked. You can't tell anybody, that's the whole point. Todoroki said, even though he knew that he would probably still tell her. Straw Hat, I want to ask you something. 
Gran Torino said to Luffy, taking him out of his debate with the chief of police. Yeah? What's up old man? Luffy said with no manners whatsoever. Luffy I asked that you be more respectful towards your elders, Iida said with a hand wave. The other students were glad that Iida was already going back to his old self. It doesn't matter. Gran Torino said in response to Iida's comment. Any other time he would have scolded Luffy. When Stain was making his speech, none of us could move, you were the only one. Why is that? I've been wondering the same thing. Todoroki said. Even my father was stumped. If it weren't for you, I would have probably still stayed on the ground. Izuku said with a disappointed expression. I don't know, he just didn't scare me. Luffy said as he was picking his nose. Plus, I faced worse guys than him, that's for sure. I guess that makes sense. Todoroki thought. He and his other classmates had a vague idea of what Luffy went through. They just didn't know how wrong they were. Ashinori's disciple can become a monster. Gran Torino thought as he looked at Izuku and then at Luffy. But why do I feel like the true monster is right in front of me? Chapter 12, Mount Agency, so, are you going to report him? Death Arms asked Mount Lady. They were sitting in the main office, discussing what had transpired the previous day. Luffy and Mineta were asleep. To be honest, I'm conflicted. Yes, he helped me when the Nomus attacked, and yes, without him things wouldn't have gone so smoothly. Mount Lady said as she stared at the ceiling, trying to figure out this dilemma. But Death Arm said, hoping he would get her to spill her thoughts. But he broke the law. He used whatever he used to go after his friends, and he attacked the Nomus when I told him not to. She said as she plopped her head on her table. I have no idea what to do. Well, I can't tell you what to do since he is interning under you, but I think you should hold off on arresting him. Death Arms offered his two cents. At least until this internship is over. You think so? Mount Lady said, not lifting her head up. He is strong and has a strong will from what you told me. Death Arms said which managed to make Mount Lady remember when Luffy stood in front of Stain, unfazed. His carefree demeanor could pose a bit of an issue. Snort. You can say that again. Mount Lady said as she massaged her temples. It's not like he did anything evil, he did help me, and he did run to his friends when he thought they needed help. Ah, so there's the problem. Death Arm said as he took a sip of his coffee. Is he a good guy? Or did he help you and his friends out of necessity? Did he help them just because they were his friends? What do you mean? Said Mount Lady with a perplexed expression. I don't think he would have helped us if he was a bad guy. I'm not saying he is evil per se. I'm just wondering if he would help anyone in need or just his friends. Death Arms explained. And how do you want to find that out? Mount Lady asked curiously. I won't find out anything, I still have my own intern and agency. Death Arm said as he stood up from his seat. How you find out if he's a good guy is up to you. Goodbye. I. Said Mount Lady, now with more problems on her plate than she started with. How am I supposed to find that out? It's not like I can make a scenario to see if he is, or can I? The next day. Okay, kids today we're going to work said Mount Lady to the still sleepy teenagers. This made both of them groan. Ugh, fine. Said Mineta while going to the closet. Where do you want me to clean up today? I'm going back to sleep. Luffy said as he did a 180. Oh, no. Today we aren't going to clean, today we are going on patrols Mount Lady said, which surprised both boys. Huh? I thought patrols aren't your thing. Mineta asked as he went back to her and Luffy. Of course they are Mount Lady lied. I just didn't think it necessary until right now. For no reason whatsoever. So, we're actually gonna do hero stuff and not just clean all day. Luffy said, already getting excited. I can't wait. Yes isn't it great Mount Lady said as she approached the door. Now come on kids, wickedness waits for no hero. On patrol, Luffy was walking side by side with Mount Lady with Mineta in the back. They were both eating some fries, freely given to Mount Lady, and Mineta was sulking. Geez, can you pipe it down? I'll get you fries next time okay? Mount Lady said, tired of Mineta's waterworks. You said that last time. Mineta muttered low enough for the heroine to not hear it, or she didn't care. Why can't I walk with you guys? I'm tired of being in the back Mineta said between sobs. I need someone to cover our backs, who knows what villain will come and strike us down. Mount Lady lied like it was no problem. The real reason is that she wanted to see how Luffy will react to an actual problem with regular, random citizens. Fortunately, Luffy hasn't noticed Mount Lady sneaking glances at him every now and then. Who look an ice cream shop Luffy said as he noticed a middle-aged woman selling different kinds of ice cream. It's so hot I could die, let's go eat some, sure. Mount Lady said, uninterested. Hey, let's see if you can get a free ice cream cone. Yeah, good idea Luffy said as he walked to the cart. He hadn't had any practice since the small amount of training he did with Mount Lady, but he was confident he could get at least something for free. Don't forget to get me one Mineta said loudly from the back. He wouldn't be surprised if he was ignored. Hey Lady Luffy said as he greeted the middle-aged woman. 
Good afternoon, what do you want? She said with as much care as she could muster, which wasn't much. Um, what did she say again? Oh yeah compliment the Luffy thought as he looked at the owner. I really like your um your Luffy said as he looked at the woman. There wasn't much to say about her, she was pretty plump, with ragged hair that reached her shoulders, and her style wasn't anything crazy. She was smoking and reading a newspaper, which couldn't be good for the ice creams, but she didn't look like she cared. By what? She urged Luffy on with slight annoyance in her tone. Your um, happy personality. Luffy chose possibly the worst thing he could compliment her on. Yeah, I'm just a bowl of rainbows and sunshine. Now, what do you want, brat? I don't got all day. She said with a slight snort. Give me free ice cream, Luffy said as he held his hands out. He could hear two people slapping their foreheads behind him. Free? You want free ice cream? She asked Luffy while just barely looking away from her newspaper. After receiving a nod from Luffy. And I want to be 20 years younger, we can't get what we all want kid, eh? But you're supposed to give me free food, Luffy said with a bit of an annoyed expression. I even farted with you and everything. He means flirted. Mount Lady said from behind his back. Yeah, and now give me free food. Luffy said it like he was enforcing the law. Kid, if you can give me a stable career job, I'll give you all the free ice cream you want. She said as she put her newspaper away. Really? Luffy said hopefully. No. Now order something or get lost. She said which made Luffy very sad at his failed attempt. Giggle. A soft giggle broke Luffy out of his depression, it also brought everyone's attention to the little girl who was giggling behind her hand. When they were all looking at her she suddenly stopped and gained a blush from embarrassment. I'm sorry. It's okay sweetie, nobody blames you. The store owner said as her personality did a complete 180, now her personality looked like sunshine and rainbows. Is there anything you needed? Um, I just want ice cream. The little girl said as she looked at the ground and fiddled with her dress. But I don't have money. Ah, that's okay sweetie. One cone of ice cream coming right up the shop owner said as she started making an ice cream cone. Eh? Why her and not me? Luffy asked, completely flabbergasted. That's because she is a cute little girl. Mount Lady said as she put a comforting hand on his shoulder. I understand your anger. No matter how much I try, I just can't compete with adorable little children. She shook her fist angrily. I'm sorry. The little girl said again as she looked at the ground, thinking somehow she made the adult mad. It's not your fault, sweetheart. Mount Lady said as she too fell under her spell while patting her head. How the mighty have fallen. You here alone? Where are your parents? Mineta asked as he got closer to her, due to his height, he was only slightly taller than the girl. He was here, but I think I lost him. The little girl said as she started frantically looking around. One ice cream cone, with love for the little cutie pie. Said the shop owner as she handed the little girl her ice cream. The little girl radiated with happiness. So yummy she said as she started licking the ice cream. After remembering her manners, she did a slight bow. Thank you. It's no problem sweet. Iri said a young man with short brown hair and a green jacket with purple feathers going around his neck. I told you not to run away. He said it more like it was an inconvenience to him than an actual worry. He was barely paying any attention to the people who surrounded him. Ah, I'm sorry. I got lost. Iri said with a shaky voice as she quickly had her ice cream behind her back. Luffy didn't need observation hockey to tell that something was wrong. Don't let it happen again. The young man said, but then he noticed the ice cream she was trying to hide. What do you have there? Ice cream? After a shaky nod, he continued. So that's why you left. I'll have to discipline you at home, now come. He re a light whimper when he forcefully grabbed her tiny arm and made her drop her ice cream. For Luffy, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. He was already on the fence when his hockey picked up his sheer lack of emotion towards the little girl, but this solidified it. Oh I Luffy said as he went face to face with a young man, grabbing his collar with one hand rage evident on his face. You made her drop her ice cream by her a new one mount lady decided not to interfere, this being the perfect opportunity to test Luffy. After a quick staring match, where you could hear Luffy's teeth grinding against each other, he relented. Of course, I didn't mean to make her drop her ice cream. This made Luffy let go of his collar, which prompted the shopkeeper to make a new one, before taking a healthy amount of air she didn't even realize she needed. The last thing I want right now is a fight, especially with a pro in the middle of the day. He thought as he went to the cart and took out his wallet. Keep the change. He said as he handed the shopkeeper more money than needed. Thank you. The middle-aged woman said warily as she handed the man his ice cream cone with slight hesitation. Luffy pushed the young man aside and got the ice cream directly from her hand. Rap Mineta said with a shaky voice, but this did not stop Luffy. Meanwhile, the young man had to bite his lip to stop himself from retaliating to Luffy's humiliating push. Soon Luffy was face to face with Eerie, crouching down to be at eye level with her, and with an ear-to-ear -ear smile he said. 
here you go. Eerie, completely entranced with Luffy, looked at his face for a couple of seconds before slowly grabbing the cone. Thank you, mister. Now, let's go. The young man said as he began walking away. Eerie still not taking her eyes off Luffy. We should get going too. Mount Lady said as she began walking in the opposite direction. Luffy and Mineta follow after her. Huh? Luffy said when he noticed someone tugging on his coat. He looked behind and noticed Eerie with a hand on his coat and looking at the ground. Please don't go. Eerie said very quietly, quiet enough only for Luffy to hear. After a couple of seconds, Eerie felt a hand on her head, making her look up at Luffy. Don't worry Eerie. That's your name right? Luffy asked with a kind voice, after a quick nod he continued. I'll remember that name. I'll use it next time we see each other, okay? Luffy Eerie they heard each of their names being called. Eerie, after a good look at Luffy's smiling face, nodded and proceeded to walk to where the young man was calling for her. Luffy doing the same. What did you guys talk about? Mount Lady asked Luffy after he caught up with them. Nothing much, just a promise. Luffy said as he put his hands behind his head and continued to walk side by side with Mount Lady. Is that so? Mount Lady said while thinking of what Death Arms told her. With a smile on her face, she thought I think I found out. Last day at Mount Agency. Okay I got everything, I'm ready to go home, Luffy said as he walked out of his room. You don't even have anything. Mineta said as he walked behind Luffy with a case in his hand. Man, this whole internship was a nightmare, can't wait for it to be over. I liked it. Luffy said as he opened the door to the main office, where he was greeted by Mount Lady. Well boys, looks like this is it. Mount Lady said as she looked at Luffy, not even acknowledging Mineta's existence. Thank you so much for this experience, I will not forget it Mineta said, doing a complete mood swing. Uh huh, why don't you go ahead? I got something I need to talk with Straw Hat over here. Mount Lady said which made Mineta depressed. What do I want to talk about? Luffy asked he plopped on the sofa, Mount Lady putting herself near him. After Mineta left she began. I should arrest you. Mount Lady said as she began eating a bag of chips. Eh? This made Luffy very surprised. Why? Don't worry, I decided not to. After you used your quirk to fight the Nomus I was this close to arresting you, but without you, the Nomus would have been a real pain to deal with, so I just took the credit, and now you got off scot-free. Mount Lady said while Luffy was eating a slice of pizza. Thanks big lady Luffy said. Luffy was never one to care about cloud and reputation, as long as he was free, he was happy. It's Mount Lady. Mount Lady said with a sigh. You know, when you came here, I thought I was going to hate every second of it. And I still did, but not as much as I thought I would. Me too Luffy said. Is that it? Wait, before you go. Mount Lady said as she got face to face with Luffy. Smooch Mount Lady gives Luffy a kiss on his cheek after taking her lips off him and taking a good look at him. Still, not even a blush. Huh? What was that? Luffy said as he rubbed his cheek where Mount Lady kissed him. Don't worry about it, now go. I got enough out of you for a lifetime. Mount Lady said as she went back to checking her phone and eating chips. And if you tell anybody about what I just did, I'll kill you. Um, okay. Luffy said wondering why would he want to tell people that Mount Lady put her mouth on Luffy's cheek. Bye big lady, uh huh. Mount Lady said as Luffy exited the room and left her alone in her agency. I can't believe I'm gonna miss that idiot. Train station. Hey Luffy Momo said as her face brightened when she saw Luffy get off the train. She was waiting for him because she knew that Luffy'll get lost if he didn't have an escort with him. Hi Momo it's been a while Luffy said as he ran face first into Momo, enveloping her in a hug. L Luffy get off Momo said with a blush as she untangled herself from Luffy's stretchy hands. It's only been a week. I'm surprised you missed me that much. Of course I missed you, you're my closest friend here. Luffy said it with a serious expression. For Luffy, this has been the longest he's been away from his crewmates, not including the training period and the farthest. So he latched on to the closest thing he has, which was Momo. D thanks Luffy. Momo said a bit embarrassed. Why you're also closest deaf friend. Well, duh. Luffy said it bluntly which made Momo feel like an idiot. Oh yeah, bye grapes, huh? Momo said as she looked there Luffy was waving to see Mineta standing there with a little bit of blood dripping from his nose. You guys are so weird. Mineta said as he went to the subway station so that he could go home. Bye rep. Anyway, did anything cool happen in your lantership? Luffy asked Momo as she began walking to her family's limousine. You mean internship? Momo asked with a raised eyebrow. That's what I said. Luffy said which made Momo sigh. Well, if you think making a perfume commercial is cool then yes. Momo said sounding very unhappy with how her internship went. I did go on some patrols, so I guess it wasn't a total waste of time. How about you Luffy? Well, let's see. Luffy said as he held a hand up. I got thrown out of a Raymond shop. I learned how to get free food. I fought some gnomus. I met up with Greeny and some other guys, and I made a promise to a little girl called Eerie. 
Luffy said while holding a finger up for everything he did. Wow, I guess more things happened at your internship. Momo said bewildered. Wait, did you say Nomis? As in USJ Nomis. Nah, these ones were way weaker. Luffy said, which managed to calm Momo down a little bit. Wait, fought. You should have gotten arrested if you used your quirk. Momo said as they eared the limousine. But I didn't. The big lady said that she's gonna take credit so that I don't go to prison. Luffy said as he got in the car. Well, it's better than prison. Momo said as she followed after him. At least someone managed to something out of their internship. I do wonder who Eerie is. Class 1A. Ahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah
that ready All Might said as Ajiro, Izuku, Mina, Siro, and Luffy got ready to start their race toward All Might. Everybody in this group has really good mobility. Kaminari said as he and the rest of Class 1A looked at a giant screen where they could see each student. I don't really know who's going to win. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious it's gonna be Luffy. Kirishima said which managed to receive a bunch of nods from his classmates. I wouldn't be so sure. Jiru said. The rep is fast, but he's an idiot, there's no sugarcoating that. He might just get lost. The duply arms quirk user said. I wouldn't bet Luffy out of the running so fast. Mineta jumped in on the conversation. I've been around him long enough to know that he'll pull a stunt and win this somehow. Well, the one at a clear disadvantage here is Midoriya. Momo said from her seating position. He won't be able to get anywhere fast enough without breaking a few bones. That's pretty true. Asui said as she looked at each of the participants to a variety of stretches, the only one who wasn't doing stretches was Luffy, who was just looking around. Let the first round begin All Might said which prompted everyone to start gunning at full speed toward All Might. Wow, look at Ashido sliding with her acid, Mineta said with a perverted look. Look at Ajiro, he's just zipping from place to place. Kaminari said when the screen switched to the tail student. Yeah. Oh, look at Siro, he's swinging from pipe to pipe like he's Tarzan Kirishima said excitedly. Why is Luffy just standing around? Mon Luffy Momo thought, hoping that Luffy will win. But then she saw Luffy hold onto two different pipes and make himself into a human slingshot. Oh no. Gomu Gomu no rocket Luffy said as he jumped full force to All Might, propulsated by his stretchy arms. Oh yeah, forgot he can do that. Jiru and Shoji ate their own words when they saw Luffy fly through the sky. Something tells me this is gonna end badly. Momo said as she watched Luffy approach All Might and then sail right past him. Yep, thought so. Whoa well, young Luffy All Might said when he noticed Luffy fly right past him. Guess you regret taking that shortcut now. Ha young Luffy. No way Luffy said as he extended his arms and grabbed All Might's head. Gotcha. Ah young Luffy All Might said as he tried swatting Luffy's hands away. You're ripping my head. Here I come, Luffy said as he made an impact with All Might, tumbling the both of them to the ground. Cough. Young Luffy in a real hostage situation, you wouldn't be able to do this you know cough. All Might said in between coughs with blood. But this isn't a real hostage thing. Luffy said it like it was obvious. That's not the point. All Might said as he offered Luffy the prize. Anyway, you managed to get here first congrats, told you Luffy'll get first place, no problem Kirishima said with smugness. Yeah no problem, besides nearly flying off in another direct and crashing into All Might. Asui said which made Kirishima sulk. The boys locker room, man, I really gotta work on my mobility. Kirishima said as he and everybody else was undressing from their hero suits and dressing back into their uniforms. You could work by compensating on other skills. Tokoyami offered his tip of the day. I'm really jealous of guys like you and Luffy. Kaminari said as he looked at Luffy messily trying to tie a tie and then giving up. You guys really got speed going for you. Hey Luffy, you won't believe what I just found. The Holy Grail Mineta said as he revealed a hole hidden behind a poster. Someone shoshing to hold to the girls' locker room, okay. Luffy said, not understanding why Mineta was so excited. Don't you dare violation of privacy is a serious offense, Iida said as Mineta approached the hole. Then you'll have to put me in solitary confinement because you can't stop me, Mineta said as he put his eye as close as he could to the wall. I can't wait to see the girl Mineta was suddenly interrupted by an earphone jack to the eye. A-A-A-H-H-H, an earphone jack. What a brutal, precise attack from next door, Izuku said as he watched Mineta scream in agony. Class 1A, last period. Summer vacation is right around the corner. But that doesn't mean you can just relax an entire month, you'll be training while you're camping in the woods. As always said to the class, which got all of them riled up. Yeah most of the class cheered with their hands in the air. Then they each proceeded to say why they were excited about the summer vacation. Oi Momo, we're going camping in the woods. Luffy asked Momo, not really understanding what was going on because he was sleeping until now. We're going to train in the woods. Momo clarified. It's gonna be a whole lot different than the training I'm used to. Awesome it's going to be like training with old man Rayleigh again, Luffy said as he pumped a fist in the air. Oh, didn't know you trained in the woods Luffy. Midoriya asked as he turned around in his seat. Yeah, my grandpa used to leave me for weeks alone in the forest to see if I could survive, Luffy said which completely shocked Izuku and Momo and attracted Todoroki's attention. Oh, I'm so Izuku was interrupted. He also tied me to a bunch of balloons once and let me fly into the air, Luffy said it like was no big deal. Todoroki started to sympathize with Luffy. That must have been horrible Luffy. Momo said as she placed a comforting hand on his hand. And there was that one time where he threw me of a cliff Luffy said it with a smile on his face. I never thought I'd say this, but I miss my grandpa. What? Todoroki said a bit harshly as he joined the conversation. How could you miss someone who basically tortured you? 
Luffy's grandpa sounded a lot like Endeavor, and he couldn't comprehend why he misses him. He did it to make me stronger. Luffy said. Why would I hate someone who only tried to do the best for me? Yes, that's why Luffy is so strong. Izuku thought with a hand on his chin. There are other ways to make someone stronger, Todoroki said a bit too angrily for his liking. Maybe, but the way he did it made me super strong, Luffy said as he flexed his biceps. And why did he do it? Just to make you into a weapon. Todoroki said, not noticing the fact that the entire class has gone quiet. He wanted me to become a marine, but I became a pirate instead, Luffy said as he put his hands behind his back. He was so mad that he beat me to a pulp Luffy said it like he was reminiscing a sweet memory. But that doesn't justify hitting you over and over or abusing your mother countless times. Todoroki said as he stood up from his seat. Uh. What are you talking about? I don't have a mom. Luffy asked clearly confused, this made Todoroki break out of his rage-induced debate. When they looked around the classroom, they saw confused shocked faces. Am Todoroki, I'm sorry. How can you talk about your grandpa hitting you so casually? I'm pretty sure you have a mom. And other types of comments like these were made. That's enough settle down, class is not over, as always said as he activated his quirk and made everybody silent. If you have a problem with Luffy or Todoroki, do it after class. I still have some information to give, those of you who don't pass the exams will have summer school. This made everyone encourage everybody else to study harder, mainly Luffy, since everybody knew that if there was someone who would fail, it would be Luffy. Meanwhile, Todoroki was just staring angrily at his desk, not noticing the sympathetic glance Izuku was giving him. Damn it, I almost blurted my entire secret to the whole class. Just tried to make me stronger. What a joke, either Luffy is too dumb to realize what his grandpa did to him, or he is embellishing his own story. I doubt Luffy would lie so casually, and if that's the case, how doesn't he have any sort of resentment towards his grandpa? I'll have to get into more detail with him later. Chapter 13, Class 1A, alright, that's it for class today. There's only one week left until your final exams begin. Azawa told the class at the end of the lesson as he was leaving the classroom. I'm sure you're all studying constantly, right? Don't forget to keep training, there's also the practical portion to worry about. Good luck. I've barely taken any notes this semester, said Ishido 18th with laughter and Kaminari 19th with despair. With the sports festival and internship, I haven't had any time to read the textbook, it's true that we haven't had much free time lately. Said Tokoyami 13th, sweating with anxiety. Kota 10th nodded alongside him. As someone who ranked in the top 10, I'm not that concerned. Said Mineta 9th with as much smugness as humanly possible, this made the other students very mad at him. Ishido, Kaminari, we've still got time to study said Izuku forth in an attempt to support and comfort his fellow classmates. That way we'll all go to the training camp together. Yes, as class deputy, I have high hopes that we'll make you a proud said Iida second alongside Izuku, both of their hands were still bandaged, courtesy of Stain. It's pretty hard to fail if you just pay attention in class. Said Todoroki fifth in an attempt to help them, but it just came off as humble bragging. Yeah, you guys are pretty dumb. Said Luffy 20th with his arms crossed and a slight nod. You have no right to say that to us yelled both Ishido and Kaminari, this just made Luffy laugh in their face. Hey don't worry about it you two, I can catch you up to speed on the important topics. Said Momo first to the failing students. Unfortunately, I won't be of much help to the practical portion. What are you talking about Momo? You'll do great said Luffy when he noticed a depressing aura surrounding his friend. This made her feel, at least, a little better. Soon after, Jiru 7th, Ajiro 8th, and Siro 17th asked Momo for help on each of their own failing subjects, Momo accepted immediately with a smile on her face, happy that she was going to get some new guests. Oh, so we're having a party. Awesome Luffy said as he completely misread the situation. Not a party, just a little study session. Said Jiru in an attempt to stop any fantasy that Luffy may be having right now. But you are coming over, right? So it's a party Luffy said which just made the others sigh. Hey Momo, can you explain it to him? I can already feel a headache coming. Jiru said, but Momo was too caught up in her own little fantasy of having a study session. Lunch, I'm kinda scared about the practical, I have no idea what's gonna be. Said Izuku as he was trying to eat his noodles. Right now, he was at a table with Iida, Momo, Yuraka, Luffy, and Todoroki. It's hard to think they'll give us anything too crazy. Said Iida as he defended his own bowl of noodles from the monster that was Luffy. I'm sure it's gonna be super easy said Luffy with a mouthful. I'm not so sure, it could be completely different from what we have faced until now. Said Momo, already done with her meal. From what Azawa told us, it's gonna cover everything we've learned so far. Said Todoroki, meal already ravaged by Luffy. You're right, we have to make Suizuku was interrupted by an elbow to the back of his head. Oops, sorry. It's just that, your head is so big that it got in the way of my elbow. Said Monomoa from class 1b with a tray of food in his hands. 
You're right he does have a big head doesn't he? Said Luffy as he got Izuku in a one-arm hug, almost knocking him down. I heard you guys ran into the hero killer, just like in the sports festival, class 1 isn't happy unless they are the center of attention, but you do realize you're not in the spotlight because you're good heroes right? It's just that you keep getting into so much trouble. Monomoa started going off on the present students. Most of the students were annoyed by his rant and the rest just chose to ignore him. Someday the rest of us will get caught up in your mess, what kind of horrible villains will you bring down up? That's not funny Monomoa, you heard what happened to Ieda, chill out. Said Kendo Itsuka as she karate chopped Monomoa into unconsciousness. He's out. Luffy gave his expert opinion as he started to poke Monomoa in the face before getting an idea. Stay here. I apologize for him, I'm sure there's a hole where his heart should be. Kendo apologized while Izuku was freaking out at how easy she knocked him out. Meanwhile, Momo saw Luffy start to rummage through his bag. So I was listening, I heard you guys were worried about what's gonna be on the big final practical. I heard it's gonna be combat against bots like the entrance exam, but really? How do you know that? Izuku asked incredulously. A friend a few grades up filled me in. I know, cheating, but oh well. Kendo said as Luffy got face to face with the still unconscious Monoma. Then Luffy said as Izuku started muttering up a storm about information gathering, this woke up Monoma. What are you doing Kendo? This was finally our chance to pull ahead of that class full of idiots, Monomoa was reduced to silence by another karate chop to the neck. They're not idiots. Kendo said as she tried to hold in her laughter while dragging him back to their table. Also, not my fault. Well, he definitely deserved it, but isn't it a bit childish? Yuraka said after Kendo was out of hearing range. Drawing on someone's face, eh? He totally deserved it, Luffy said as he pointed to Monomoa. Momo was seen just shaking her head. That wasn't becoming a class representative Ieda said as he started chopping the air. Although, I suppose it could have been worse. Classroom, Eku Bakugu suddenly said, scaring the poor green at half to death. I saw the way you're using your quirk, and I have to say, it's seriously pissing me off. We'll get new scores in the upcoming exam, new rankings so we'll all know where we're standing, I'll show you how much better I am. Bakugu's sudden challenge put the whole class in a tense mood, not having seen Bakugu this worked up since the quirk test. I see hot rubber brain I'll kill you too, the mood quickly dissolved when they saw Luffy giving a thumbs up with his tongue sticking out in response to Bakugu's challenge. Bakugu was already out of the classroom to notice that. The Oirozu Mansion, the gym, okay, ready. Luffy said as he prepared to throw a punch. You're not supposed to say when you're about to punch me Luffy. Momo said as she stood in the middle of the ring, blindfolded. Oh yeah, sorry. Luffy said with a small giggle before throwing a punch and knocking Momo to the floor. Again, ugh, damn it, why can't I feel it? Momo said, growing more and more annoyed with each sparring match, as she rubbed the growing bump on the back of her head. And yes, again, until I feel the tingle again. You felt it that one time, and you're not feeling it anymore? Luffy asked with a small tilt of his head. It's not that I don't feel it, it's just that it's very faint. Momo said as she took her blindfold off and started to drink out of a bottle of water. At the sports festival, I could feel it clear as day, the pins and needles, I could tell exactly where it was going to hit me. But now, I can't tell anymore. When I was training with old man Rayleigh, I started with animals, maybe it's because of that. Luffy said as he tried to somehow coach his student. It wouldn't matter if it was because of that, we don't have any animals for me to train with anyway. Momo said which made Luffy sigh. When you sense attacks, how does it feel? When I sense. Luffy said before putting a hand on his chin and trying to look sagely. It's like, whoosh and then brrrrrrr. Luffy explained as he waved his arms and pretended like he was cold. Translation. Seeing the attack then getting the pins and needles. Thanks. Momo said as she sighed. What was she expecting? An actual response. This yeoi rozu, the guests have arrived. Momo and Luffy heard the speaker mounted to the wall say. Oh no I've almost forgotten, I'm not ready yet, Momo said as she started panicking. I'm sweaty and full of bruises I got so caught up in my training I forgot the study session is today, I can't let them see me like this. Don't worry Momo, you go get ready, Luffy said as he gave her a toothy grin. I'll deal with them. Thanks Luffy, I owe you one. Momo said as she started running towards the closest shower. The Great Hall. I could not feel more out of place right now. Ajiro said as he looked at the luxurious room. They were all seated at a table right now, ready to learn. Me too. Siro said before seeing Luffy swing the door open, full of energy. What's up guys Luffy said as he quickly got on the table. Who's ready to party? No way, we're studying, not partying. Jiru said, which made Luffy extremely depressed. Unbeknownst to her, some other students also shared a similar emotion to Luffy. Ugh, then what's the point of being here? Luffy said as he melted on the table. Studying studying's the point Jiru said annoyed, only for the words to enter one of Luffy's ears and out the other. Hey up, where's Yamomo? Ajiro asked Luffy who was sitting now. 
I thought she'd be the first one to meet us. Yeah no kidding, by the way she was acting, I'm surprised she wasn't waiting at the gate. Nina chipped in. Momo? She's taking a shower. I offered to meet you guys. Luffy said as he got a bag of chips from somewhere and started to nonchalantly eat it. Really? I thought she couldn't wait to meet us. Kaminari said. Kinda weird that she forgot. Yeah well, she was really sweaty, guess she doesn't want you guys to see her like that. Luffy said, which made the other question why she was sweaty. Man, we've been going at it for a few hours I think, huh? Said everybody at once after processing what they just heard for a couple of seconds. Yeah, I'm getting kinda tired of doing it, but I at least owe Momo that much. Luffy said as he continued eating without a care in the world. She wants to do it more and more lately, I think she's really frustrated. Who what exactly? Kamniari asked slowly. You know, it Luffy responded, which helped in no way. Be more specific. Siro said quickly. Meanwhile, Mina dragged Jiru into a more private conversation, as the boys started pestering Luffy more and more. You don't think? Mina asked after thinking about how to phrase it. No, no. Of course not. No way in hell, I mean, this is Luffy we're talking about. Jiru quickly refuted any thought. Yeah I know, I know. But it's not impossible, right? Mina asked back. I guess so, but they're siblings right? Jiru said. No, remember. The first day of school. Mina said, which made Jiru remember when Momo said that she and Luffy are not siblings. See? Mina said when she saw realization dawn on Jiru. Yeah, but still. And they both live in the same house, and Luffy said Momo was sweaty, and they're both good looking, and they both call each other by their first names. Mina brought up some good points. Sure, but come on, you really think he knows how to do it? Jiru said as she pointed at Luffy, who right now was getting assaulted by an extremely frustrated Kaminari. You know, I heard dumb guys are great at doing it. Mina said after a couple of seconds of silence. See, that is something that I did not need to know about. Jiru said as she put emphasis on did not. Sorry to keep you waiting, Momo said as she entered the room, fully dried and ready for studying, only to see Luffy and Kaminari wrestling on the ground, Ajiro and Siro not far behind. Sigh. What did Luffy do now? Yeah Momo what did you do with Luffy until right now? Kaminari said as he kept Luffy in a headlock, having grown tired of Luffy evading the question. Until right now. We were just sparring. Momo said as she tilted her head. This made everybody go ah, told you? Jiru said to a now slightly annoyed Mina. She was really hoping for some juicy drama. Why didn't you say that? Kaminari said as he got off of Luffy. I did Luffy said, completely confused as to why he was getting attacked. Anyway, I think it's time we finally start studying. Ajiro said as he got back to his seat. I agree, I was waiting for this moment. Momo said as she got to her seat. Luffy followed after her. Oh, that reminds me. Since you guys are here and all. Luffy said as he got everybody's attention. How about I train you guys, huh? Jiru asked. Yeah, just a quick little spar. Nothing too crazy. Luffy said as he pretended to fight. I think he just wants to fight. Thought pretty much everyone at the table. Look rep, it's not that we don't want to be trained by you. It's just that Siro said, but not coming up with any good reason, he elbowed Ajiro in the side. Um? Yeah, it would be really cool but we already got our own training Ajiro said, thankful that he came up with an excuse. Yeah, yeah exactly Kaminari said, while also apologizing for lying in his head. Ah man Luffy whined. Well, maybe next time. Yep, yep, for sure. Ajiro said while making a mental note to never accept an invitation to Yaoi Rozu's mansion ever again. Sorry rep, I know you mean well. But the truth is, I don't want any broken bones. Everybody besides Luffy and Momo thought at the same time. Can't say that I blame them. Momo thought as she got her notebook ready. Shall we begin? Yes everybody said at the same time while Luffy was already asleep. A of the exams, written exam, alright put your pencils down, the last person in each row, bring the answer sheets to me. As Awa said as he stopped everybody from writing. Thanks so much for all your help, Mina said to a startled Momo. I didn't leave anything blank at least Kaminari was right beside her. Soon, Azawa caught Luffy's test sheet out of the corner of his eye, and the first thing he thought of when he saw it was. Did he really just scribble down random stuff on a test sheet? Practical exam. Now, it's time for the final test. Remember it's possible to fail this final. Azawa said as he and the other faculty teachers stood in front of class 1A, who were all wearing their hero suits. So don't make any stupid mistakes. Uh, why are all the teachers here? Jiru asked. Right now, they were in front of a large building in a big, empty parking lot. I expect many of you have gathered information and have some idea of what you'll be facing today. As always said which made Mina and Kaminari pumped. Actually this year's test will be completely different for various reasons. Nezu said as he popped out of Azawa's special scarf. Principal Nezu Jiru, Ajiro, and Siro said at the same time. Oh little bear Luffy said alongside them. You're changing things. 
Momo asked, a little panicked. The tests now have a new focus, they will be hero work of course. Nezu said as he gently jumped to the ground. But also teamwork and combat between actual people, so what does that mean for you? You students will be working in pairs, and your opponents will be one of our esteemed UA teachers, isn't that fabulous? We're F fighting the teachers. Yuraka asked as she and everyone else looked in terror at the teachers. Well, everyone else besides Luffy, he was excited. Izuku and Bakugou panicked when they found out the opponents they'll be facing is All Might. Momo not being too far behind them when she herself found out her opponent is Azawa, Todoroki didn't look too agitated. Flashback, after a quick debate about why they changed the final exam from robots to teachers, they started talking about teams. Everything was going smoothly until they reached the wild card. Monkey D. Luffy. As always said as he looked at his sheet which contained as much information as possible about him. I'm guessing you'll be fighting him principal. I have thought about it, and I disagree, I believe my talents are better used on another set of students. Nezu said as he completely disagreed. Why? From what I've seen, Luffy ain't exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. Snipe asked. I reckon he'd be the perfect target for you. I'm thinking the same thing. 13 agreed with Snipe. I see why some of you may think that, but the truth is that Luffy is such an unexpected being that I wouldn't be able to expect his level of unexpectedness. His whole presence here is unexpected in the first place. Nezu said, which left some teachers dumbfounded. Huh? Present Mick was the first one to ask. What I mean is, Luffy is a very creative person, and, with his quirk, I think he would be able to find his way out of any challenge I may throw his way. Nezu said in his usual cheerful tone. I got that much from All Might's report. It's true, when I hosted a little race between all the students, he flew straight at me instead of running like most people would think to do. All Might said when he noticed every pair of eyes land on him. Then what do you propose we should do? As always said as he turned back to Nezu. I believe the best course of action is to have Luffy, alongside Kirishima, fight against Cementus here. Nezu said as he pointed at Cementus. He has the best chance to overwhelm him and possibly secure a victory. All right, I'll do my best. Cementus said. Although, there is a thought that has been pestering me lately. Nezu said. One concerning Luffy and his abilities. And flashback. To complete the exam you'll have 30 minutes. Nezu said as he held three fingers. In order to win, your objective is to put these handcuffs on your teacher, or you can win if any of you manage to leave the combat stage. This time your exam will be very close to a real battle, as strange as it is, please think of us as real villains. 13 said. Assuming you come across your enemy if you reckon you can win then fight, however Snipe chipped in. In instances where you're outmatched, it would be smarter to run away and find help. Azawa finished Snipe's sentence. Todoroki, Midoriya, Iida. I'm sure the three of you understand. After All Might revealed that they handicapped themselves by adding to their body weight with super compressed weights, courtesy of Hatsume, they began their exam, Luffy and Kirishima going first. Ajiro, I think we should come up with a plan of attack that makes use of both of our quirks. Iida said as he and Ajiro went into the building. Great. Ajiro agreed. Okoyami, let's go come up with a plan. Asui said as she pointed towards the building. Agreed. Tokoyami said as they started going in. Let's go Siro, we've got to figure out how to strip Ms. Midnight, Mineta said as he walked inside the building with his fist held high. You're such a little scumbag. Siro said with his hands on his hips as he followed him. Okay representative with my awesome quirk and your experience there's nobody we can't win against, Kirishima said as he pumped his fist. The yeah, Luffy copied his move. Soon after, they both arrived at their respective area. Luffy's test. The area was the one they used for the entrance exam, the only difference is that there were no robots, no other students, and only one teacher. Practical exam, ready? Go Kirishima and Luffy heard a robotic voice say over the intercom. So what do you think? We'll definitely get a higher score if we capture him, right? Kirishima asked Luffy as they were both running toward their opponent. Who cares? I just want to have some fun Luffy said, which made Kirishima sweat drop, soon they were stopped by a sudden cement wall. Mr. Cementus can't move very fast. Let's break through the front and shoot for a high score, Kirishima said as he hardened his arms. Sure Luffy said, not really having any better ideas. Soon, they were both breaking cement walls as they closed in on their teacher, while he just stood there and made more and more walls. After about five minutes. This isn't good no matter how many I break, he just keeps on making more and more walls, Kirishima said as he started to struggle with keeping his quirk active. I'm running out of steam, hmm. Luffy said before quickly gaining an idea. Hey, spiky hair can you make yourself hard for one last push, um? Hell yeah Kirishima said, excited that Luffy finally put his brain to work. Monitoring room, they're done for. The faculty choose teachers that can exploit our weaknesses. For this test, we'll have to overcome them. Izuku said as he looked at Luffy and Kirishima being encased in walls of cement. That's true, so before your own final you should thigh. What? 
Yuraka said, unintentionally interrupting recovery girl. What are they doing? Well, leave it to Luffy to find a way out of this mess. Izuku said as he watched in disbelief. With Cementus. You're both weak when it comes to long-term battles, listen well. When it comes to Lon Cementus stopped lecturing what he thought were the two students encased in concrete when he heard a yell above him. What the? Ha bet you didn't expect that Kirishima said as he flew towards the teacher. Wrecking ball he said as he tucked his whole body in, hardening it in the process to resemble a ball as close as possible. Ha ah, maybe next time, don't announce your surprise attack. Cementa said as he caught the student mid-flight with a hand made out of concrete. Still, if it weren't for Kirishima, I think they would have gotten the better of me. Thanks for the advice, but I meant to announce it, Kirishima said victoriously as he started to dig himself out of the concrete hand. Wah, wow. Gomu Gomu no rifle Luffy yelled as he twisted his arm as much as possible before delivering a devastating blow to the teacher's face, knocking him out instantly. Yay we won let's go Luffy said as he started celebrating, a very exhausted Kirishima appeared next to him with a pair of handcuffs in hand, let's make sure first. Kirishima said as he put the handcuffs on the knocked out teacher. Yeesh, he's not waking up anytime soon, monitoring room, well, I wasn't expecting that. Yuraka said as she watched Kirishima plop to the ground from exhaustion, and Luffy continued to celebrate. First match and I'm already needed. Recovery girl said grumpily as she started going towards the combat arena. At least it's not a student, I take back what I said. Izuku said as he watched the heroine exit. I guess Luffy can turn any bad situation into a good one if he wants to. Yeah, he was able to overcome his weakness and beat his teacher, Yuraka said as she pumped her hands into the air. On second thought, that sounded better in my head. Next match should be Aoi Rozu and Todoroki against Mr. Izawa, I wonder how they'll do. Izuku thought out loud. I'm sure they'll do fine. With Todoroki's quirk and Yamomo's smarts, they'll be an unstoppable duo, Yuraka said as she pumped her fist high into the air. True, but we also have to take into account Mr. Izawa's quirk and the on-job experience. Izuku said as he watched the screens change to a more suburban area. I just hope they'll be able to beat him. Momo's test. Alright Yeoi Rozu, are you ready? Todoroki said when he heard a bell ring out in the distance, signaling the start of the exam. What's that? Just a little insurance. Momo said as she put the gun-looking object in a holster strapped to her thigh. Alright, good to go. I hope you're not planning on killing him. Mr. Izawa is a hero who specializes in stealth operations, so I'm thinking that we use our quirks continuously to see if he spotted us. Todoroki said as he started running with a small bit of ice around his hand, Momo close behind him with Russian dolls sprouting out of her. Good plan, we should also try to avoid close quarters combat with him. Momo said with an annoyed expression on her face while thinking. I can't sense him, if Luffy was here, I bet he would have already found him. Damn, why can't I sense him? Wait, this could be exactly the opportunity I need. Wait Todoroki, let's think of a plan before we go any further. Momo said as she stopped in the middle of a dark alley. Sure, but let's make our plan as we run, we can't afford to be taken in by surprise. Todoroki argued as he also slowed himself. But we need to come with a plan as soon as possible to defeat him. Momo said, while actually thinking. I'm sorry Todoroki, but this is a rare opportunity for me to develop my hockey further, I can't afford to waste it. I get that, but we also need to stay on the run in case he finds us. Todoroki said as he got closer to Momo. But what if he finds us without a plan? Momo was stalling. We need to make one as soon as possible. Sure but let's do it as we run Todoroki was confused as to why Momo seemed so fixated on this point so badly. My, my, arguing in the middle of an exam. As always said from the top of a building before jumping down. I expected better from the two of you. Run Yeoi Rozu Todoroki yelled as he started running. Damn, I didn't even notice my ice was gone. This is my chance Momo thought as she got a metal bat from her waist. Since she was used to it from Luffy's training, she decided to incorporate it as a part of her arsenal. Go on without me, huh? Todoroki said as he looked back, only to see Azawa run straight at her, scarf in hand. Foolish, you expect to beat me hand to hand. Azawa said as he started to attack her, only for her to barely dodge some of his kicks. She can't possibly expect to beat me here, in my element. Why is she trying so hard? Is her confidence really that high? Monitoring room, I'm surprised Momo took this kind of approach. Yuraka said when she saw Momo start to dodge Azawa's attacks. Yeah, guess Luffy really rubbed off on her. Izuku said before hearing the door open behind him. Oh, what's up guys? Luffy said as he approached the TVs. What's this? Wow, it's like you summoned him. Yuraka said as he pointed at Luffy. Please don't say stuff like that. Izuku said. Also, are you already done with recovery girl Luffy? That fight seemed exhausting. Nah, I've been in longer fights than that one. Luffy said before finally noticing. Wait, that's Momo. Yep, she's been fighting Mr. Izawa, I'm impressed she lasted this long against him. Yuraka said as she looked worriedly at the screen. 
Don't count Momo out yet. Luffy said in support of his friend. Get him Momo. Back with Momo. After a couple more lucky dodges, Momo's streak ended with a painful elbow to the face. This gave Azawa the chance to capture her with his scarf, with Todoroki spectating and analyzing this whole fight. Now's my chance Todoroki thought as he sent a blast of fire at Azawa. Him having to fight Momo and his injuries from the Nomu attack all amounted to damaging the amount of time he can hold his eyes open without blinking. Amazawa said as he was forced to dodge the ball of fire, which also gave Momo the opportunity to free herself. Now after blinking he found himself staring at the end of a weirdly shaped handgun. You're going to shoot your teacher. For this test, you're not my teacher, and this isn't a gun, Momo said as she pulled the trigger right in Azawa's face. It's a flashlight. White. White was all Azawa could see, even after closing his eyes, he still saw white. This forced him to retreat to the rooftop which gave the students a chance to escape. Damn it, can't see anything, she took advantage of my weakness. Can't say I'm not impressed. Hell of an insurance you got there. Todoroki said as he and Momo started running out of there as fast as they could. I just hit him with 30 lumens, he's blinded, at least for a little bit. Momo said before looking at her now completely burned flashlight. Unfortunately, it's a one-time thing. For reference, the average flashlight has about 100 lumens. Now mind telling me what were you thinking back there? Todoroki said, not in an angry manner but more confused. Nothing, just a little bit of training. Momo said dismissively, which made Todoroki wonder what kind of training is worth the exam. I definitely felt Mr. As always hits. I think I get it now, it's not about the opponent or the battle, it's about the stakes and the adrenaline. I never really felt like I was losing something when I was sparring with Luffy, but here I can lose my chance to go to the training camp. That must be it. After about 10 minutes of running, they finally came to a stop behind the corner of a two-story house. Well, I hope you're done with your training. Todoroki said while gasping for air. We put quite some distance between us and Mr. Azawa. We should come up with an actual plan before he has a chance of finding us. Agreed, so what are you thinking? Momo said as dolls kept popping out of her. After a quick strategic talk, they came up with a plan. Monitoring room, huh? What are they doing? Luffy said as he squinted at the screen in an attempt to see why Momo and Todoroki were shuffling. They're probably setting up some form of trap, it's probably their best bet for when Mr. Azawa comes after them. Izuku said as he put his hand on his chin and thought. Oh, it's already his turn. Recovery girl said as she walked in the room and sat in her seat. He must have his hands quite full, if he's taking this long. It's the granny Luffy said as he pointed at her, the other two students just sweat dropped. Watch yourself young man, I may be old, but don't think I'm not old enough for you to receive a beating. Recovery girl said as he waved her walking stick at him. You did quite a number on Cementus, I think he'll be out until sunset. Shishishi, sorry Luffy said as he giggled which irritated the elder heroine. You're not supposed to laugh she said before noticing something out of the corner of her eye. Oh, looks like things are picking up. Back with Momo, this is a pretty good plan, I just hope that it's good enough for him. Todoroki said as he hit a catapult under an urban camo sheet. I hope so to Momo's words were stopped when she felt a shiver go down her spine, and at the last possible second, she dodged a flying star which grazed Todoroki's arm a little bit. A shuriken. Out Todoroki yelped from the sudden sting as he felt blood trickle down his arm. He must think he's some sort of ninja. That was an impressive dodge Aoi Rozu. As always said from the top of a rooftop. And don't worry, it wouldn't have done any permanent damage, just enough to get you out of the running. He then proceeded to lay caltrops all around them in an attempt to keep them from escaping like last time. Don't want you running away again now do we? Don't worry, we intend on finishing it here, Todoroki said before dodging another incoming shuriken. After a couple of more flying stars, Azawa proceeded to jump in with them. We got a Momo and Todoroki thought, but were surprised when they realized that nothing was happening. Bam his flying stars must have destroyed them, Momo thought before looking at a couple of wall-mounted mines, which were supposed to shoot a capture net. Now Todoroki. Right Todoroki said as he revealed a catapult filled with a long scarf, similar to Azawa's, but a bit more metallic. What's this? Azawa thought when he saw the catapult. Hmm, best to avoid it. He then proceeded to jump out of the way of the incoming projectile, while also capturing Todoroki in his own scarf. Unfortunately, in all the commotion, he failed to notice Momo's quirk at work. He caught me Todoroki suddenly yelled in an attempt to further distract Azawa. That scarf must have been some way of restraining me, right? Maybe next time try not to be so obvious Awa's speech slurred as he felt all his strength drain away from him. Huh, oh, nothing much, just a fast-acting muscle relaxant. Momo said as she showed her teacher a bladder gun. More commonly known as a tranquilizer, but the last remaining strength that Azawa had, he plucked the dart from the back of his neck, that being the last thing that he saw before he went to sleep. Wow, that worked way better than I thought, Momo said as she plopped to the ground, mentally and physically exhausted. We make a great team Todoroki. Todoroki? 
Momo said after a couple of seconds of silence, wait, don't tell me. Oh yes, Momo didn't shoot just one trank dart, she shot multiple in case she missed Azawa fortunately, she managed to knock out the opponent. Unfortunately, she also knocked out her teammate. Monitoring room, wow that was incredible, Izuku said with admiration as he watched Momo put the cuffs on her teacher. It seems their plan worked out, maybe a little better than she wanted to. Yuraka said worriedly as she watched Momo check on the knocked out Todoroki before plopping him and Izawa in a seating position and signaling to the camera that she needs medical attention. Am I going to be needed every round? Recovery girl said as she started going to assist Momo. Hold on granny, I'm coming with you, Luffy said as he followed the heroine out the door. Luffy really has a one-track mind, doesn't he? Izuku said before turning back to the screen. But they had a plan and managed to execute it, and for better or for worse, it worked, yeah, although I do wonder. Yuraka said with a finger on her chin. Why did Momo engage Mr. Azawa in a head-to-head -head fight? Back with Momo and now Luffy. Boy Momo congrats Momo heard Luffy yell as he ran straight at her, recovery girl was just shaking her head behind him. Momo managed to clean the area of any caltrips and mines as she waited for the nurse to arrive. Thank you Luffy. Momo said tiredly. I assume I can say the same to you? Momo asked, she missed Luffy's fight so she didn't know. Yep it was easy Luffy said as he now came to a halt. Well, I'm not surprised. Momo said she expected Luffy to win, for the simple fact that it was Luffy. TSK, TSK, TSK. Kids these days, they only care about winning. Recovery girl said as she pulled out a mini flashlight and started to check on the knocked out people. No respect for the elderly I tell you, making me come here every round with my bad knees. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Momo said as she did a slight bow. Sorry for what? Luffy said, not knowing why she had to apologize. It doesn't matter now Sunny. I just hope the rest of the rounds won't be as bad. Recovery girl said as she delivered a bowl of foreshadowing. So hey Luffy, I think I figured something out. Momo said as she pulled Luffy into a more private conversation. Yeah? What's that? Luffy asked. How to make food from your power. No listen. Momo quickly dismissed his idea. Hockey evolves the fastest in an actual fight. Yeah. I know, I thought I told you. Luffy said. No, what I mean is, fights with actual stakes, like where you could lose something very important, not just any fight. Momo elaborated. I thought that was obvious. Luffy said, slightly confused. Well, it clearly wasn't obvious to me. I thought you meant any fight. Momo said a bit annoyed. That's why I was getting so frustrated. Sorry to interrupt your private chat, but I need to know what you hit them with. Recovery girl said. No, it's alright we were done anyway. Momo said as she turned to face the heroine. Nothing unusual, just a healthy dosage of muscle relaxant. Healthy huh? Recovery girl said as she started writing down on a notepad. Well, from what I can tell here, there isn't anything serious but without proper equipment, I can't tell how long they will be out for. The dose I put in those darts should keep them knocked out for at least 30-40 minutes. Momo said with a hand on her hip. I doubt they should be out for longer than that. I see well, off you go. This is an exam site, and you two shouldn't be here anymore. Recovery girl said which prompted the two students to leave, she saw Momo look back with a face full of worry. I'll take care of them, don't worry. You just enjoy the fact that you passed, right? Momo said as she tried to banish all thoughts of concern from her mind. Monitoring room, the Maui Ama and Yuraka have passed the finals was the first thing Luffy heard as he entered the monitoring room. Oh they passed. Luffy asked as he, Momo, and Iida entered the room. It appears so, not surprisingly of course. Iida said as he held his suit's helmet in his hands. I'm happy for her. Yeah she did great as Uku reaffirmed. Also, congrats on passing your finals Iida and Momo. Ribbit. I just got here so I haven't seen your exam, but congrats. Asui also congratulated them. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Iida said with a grin, Momo nodding along. Iida stumbled a bit when he felt Luffy pat him on the back. So, now what? Luffy asked. Ashido and Kaminari are paired up for the next battle. Momo responded. They're going to have to fight against Principal Nezu, the little bear. Luffy said as he looked at the screen. I wonder how he fights. We'll have to watch this round carefully. Iida said. Yeah. Izuku said. After an embarrassing defeat, for the students of course. Luffy dozed off, what's the point in a fight if you can't even see your opponent? Actually, Luffy slept through all of the fights, well almost all of the fights. Huh? Luffy said as he suddenly stood up, startling some of the students. What's happening? Well, well, if it ain't the sleeping beauty. Kirishima said as Luffy approached the TV. You almost missed out, missed out. Luffy said as he looked at the screen. Boom boy. Greeny. Exactly, and their opponent is All Might. Iida said as All Might suddenly appeared on the screen, similar to Luffy's shave technique, and grabbed Bakugou by his face as the teenager tried to blast him. How'd you even wake up? Asui asked. 
I mean, you slept through present mix test, I can't imagine this being louder than that, so you sensed it too Luffy. I don't know if it's because of my last fight or because of All Might, but I can feel his strength even from here. Momo said as she glanced at Luffy. If I can feel it, I can't imagine what you're going through. Man, he's really something isn't he? Luffy said with a smile on his face as he watched All Might nearly break Izuku's back. I really want to fight him. Everybody around him was too stunned by what was happening on the screen or already used to the weird things Luffy was saying to actually pay any attention, but one thing was for sure, nobody thought Luffy stood a chance against him, not even Momo. End of the practical exam, well, this is it. Congratulations to everybody who passed, good luck next time for those who didn't. Azawa said, which made two students sulk even more than they already did. Right now Azawa and his class were all in the parking lot as the sun began to set. You'll all get your results in a couple of days. Man, this day felt really long. Kirishima said. With the practical and the written test. I'm beat. How do you think I feel? Kaminari asked. Oops, sorry man. Kirishima apologized. Better luck next time. Siro said. I don't know why you're talking, you didn't do anything the whole exam. Asui said, which made Siro remember and wonder if he also failed. Yep, I had to do all the work. Mineta gloated with his hands behind his head. Nothing much for a regular hero like me. Enough chatter, it's time to go home. Azawa said, which immediately relieved the students and prompted them to head home. Yay finally Luffy said as he threw his hands into the air, everybody around him just sweat dropped, while also wondering how can he still have that much energy. Dot I'm hungry. Not you Luffy, you're still needed here. Azawa stopped Luffy in his tracks. Eh? Come on I want to go home Luffy said, as he began to walk away, but was stopped by Azawa's scarf. Luffy? Momo was the first to worry. Huh? The rep. Mina asked as she looked over her shoulder only to see Luffy begin to struggle out of the scarf. What's happening? Toru also asked. What seems to be the problem? Iida asked out of concern for his class representative. None of your business. Azawa quickly refuted. It's just an issue with his written exam. Ah, of course everybody thought at the same time. Ah, I see. I apologize for interrupting Iida said as he did a quick bow. No need, just go home. Azawa said as he began dragging Luffy inside the building. I don't like lying to my class like that, but I've got no choice. I told him he should have studied. Momo said with an exasperated sigh as she began going home. Not that it would have done him any good. I just hope the rep will still come to the summer camp with us. Kirishima worriedly said to no one in particular. Luffy's actual test. Mon, it's night already, can't I just go home? Luffy said as some headlights turned on around him, filling the area with light. Not to worry young Luffy, this will be over quickly All Might said as he stood a good distance apart from Luffy, not far enough that Luffy couldn't reach him with his fruit, but far enough for a fight. What will? Luffy asked as he tilted his head. Also why are we, where Greeny and Boom Boy fraught you? Luffy, this is Principal Nezu on the speaker. Luffy heard a voice in the distance. I took the liberty to look over your written exam, and I think it's safe to say that you won't be passing. So, seeing as how academics isn't your strong suit, I thought that a little match will suffice. There's nothing little about this fight get that boy out of there before he gets seriously injured Luffy heard recovery girl's voice over the speaker. There's no point in arguing, he already made up his mind. Snipe said. As you can hear, I am not the only one observing this fight. Nezu said. So, we're fighting. Luffy said after a couple of moments of silence as the wind reverberated through the broken buildings. Don't be scared young Luffy, although I won't be holding back, I will stop before any serious injury. All Might said as he caressed the wrist where his weights are. But you're holding back right now. Luffy said which surprised All Might a little bit. With those bracelets right, well, if we're gonna fight, at least let's make it fair. Luffy said completely seriously. Besides, what's the point of fighting if we can't fight at full power? So I suppose you're right. All Might said as he released his weights, making small craters where they dropped. Now let's give them a show shall we? Yash Luffy said with an ear-to-ear -ear smile, hands at the ready. Flashback, although, there is a thought that has been pestering me lately. Nezu said. One concerning Luffy and his abilities. And what's that? Midnight asked. But most of our students, they have worked their lives to train their quirks, only now developing ultimate moves and trump cards, but with Luffy. Nezu explained further. You feel like he has a couple more aces up his sleeve, more than he lets on. Azawa finished Nezu thought. Can't say I haven't thought about that. Exactly, I think that Luffy has great potential, greater than some. Nezu said. But we won't be able to take full advantage of his power if we don't know its limit. You don't think the Nomu was enough of an enemy to bring out his limit? Thirteen asked, slightly surprised. I don't, that's why I think we should find them out as soon as possible, and I think I know just how to do it. Nezu said as he looked at All Might, soon after every eye in the room fell on All Might. Wait, you don't mean me? All Might said after putting the pieces together. 
Oh, if you insist. Nezu basically made All Might accept. Surely there's a better way. All Might said as he began looking around the room full of teachers. Right, I have to agree with All Might. Cementus said in his support. He might look the roughest in that room, but the truth is that Cementus is just a big softy. Why can't we just ask him? Exactly All Might said, he already had to fight two of his students, he didn't want to fight another. Let's say we do ask him and let's say he doesn't lie. Azawa disagreed with Cementus. We'll never be able to get the full picture of what he can do without seeing it firsthand. Sure, but do we really need to resort to violence? All Might said which made Azawa sweat drop. Isn't violence the way you fight crime? Azawa said. What's the difference here? First of all, I intimidate criminals most of the time. All Might said, as Awa rolled his eyes in return. Second, he is a student not a common thug. True, but this is the fastest way to find out what he's capable of. Ectoplasm argued. Besides, he's made of rubber. Blunt attacks shouldn't have that much of an effect on him. Midnight said which helped relieve some of All Might's stress. <coughs> but I understand. All Might agreed after a couple of silent seconds. That's what I like to hear Nezu said victoriously, while All Might was already regretting his choice. End of flashback. Now, get ready gentlemen Luffy and All Might heard midnight from the speaker. Begin. Remember what I said young Luffy no holding back All Might said as he hocked his fist back. California smash. All Might hit the air so hard that multiple buildings started to crack, the broken glass disintegrated, cracked concrete evaporated, and lampus spent. Luffy was unfortunately also caught in this attack, him managing to catch himself by grabbing two sides of a building. Hopefully that was enough, I didn't hold back with that attack, and now without these weights, I feel light as a feather. All Might thought as he squinted his eyes as he tried his best to look for Luffy. BTW, I'll be switching between Luffy's perspective, All Might's and the rest of the teachers, so try to keep up. Damn he's strong way stronger than the bird guy Luffy said as he started pulling on his arms. Gomu Gomu no rocket, huh? All Might said when he saw a certain straw hat come at him at crazy speeds. So he's not out yet. Ear third Luffy said as he blew air into his fist, making it the size of a giant and also sending a bit of hockey into it. Ready for more young Luffy? All Might said as he put his hands up to brace himself for the incoming attack. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as he also sent some Ryu into his fist. What kind of quirk is that? Ectoplasm said as he watched Luffy's giant fist become engulfed in flames. He can enlarge his fist, steal it, and set it on fire. We'll be able to learn something out of this after all. Nezu said as he sipped some tea. Red rock and in a fiery explosion, Luffy sent All Might flying, stopping right at the exit gate. What the hell was that? All Might said as coughed up blood on the ground, not because of his quirk this time. I felt like he punched me in the guts, then took my guts out and punched them. I have to be more careful. I told you I won't be holding back Luffy said as he suddenly appeared above All Might, steam coming out of him. Gomu Gomu no jet spear. After All Might narrowly avoided Luffy's two-legged attack, he appeared right in front of him. You're pretty fast, I'll give you that, uh? Luffy said, completely taken aback by his speed. Hexa Smash All Might delivered a quick and heavy blow straight to Luffy's face, sending him through multiple buildings. I can't take you lightly anymore young Luffy, I see that now. Ow, ow, ow Luffy said with each building he passed through. Ouch. Luffy whined when a piece of rubble fell on his head. That probably would have hurt a lot more with hockey. Ugh, that meathead he's putting more and more children in the hospital. Recovery girl said as she prepared her first aid kit. I don't like it at all I tell you. He didn't hold back with that punch, did he? Present Mick said as the camera panned to the destroyed buildings. Ouch, it hurts just to look. You dig, you have to be so loud. Azawa groaned as the camera switched to Luffy's position. Looks like he's getting back up. TSK, TSK, TSK. Kids these days, they're looking for their graves and they don't know how to find them. Recovery girl said as she got back in her seat. His durability is also nothing to laugh at. Thirteen said as they watched Luffy run back to where All Might was. It could rival All Might's. Gomu Gomu no Gatling Luffy said as he came face to face with All Might and then proceeded to rain down punches on him. This is quite the massage young Luffy. All Might said as he interrupted Luffy's attack by grabbing his arms. Damn it Luffy said as he tried to get back his arms but they were stuck in All Might's iron grip. Can't get free. But we're not here to play games All Might then proceeded to deliver a massive headbutt to Luffy. Quite the squishy head you have why don't you try this. Luffy started feeling very dizzy as All Might started spinning him around faster and faster, occasionally he would hit either a building or a broken lampist, he couldn't really tell at the speed he was going. I'll see you soon All Might said as he threw Luffy in the air, with a built up momentum from him spinning Luffy around. Soon after throwing him, he jumped right after him. Ah it's still spinning. Luffy said as he tried to regain balance mid-flight, it wasn't very easy, especially with the dizziness he experienced earlier. Crap, I told you I would meet you soon All Might said as he appeared right above him mid-flight. With a fist behind his back, he said. 
Detroit smash. This is getting hard to watch. Cement is set after Luffy plummeted at incredible speeds toward the ground, making a massive crater and destroying several buildings in the process. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. No coward has ever discovered anything. Nezu said as he watched the screen. Did you just call me a coward? Cementos asked. Nezu chose to ignore that question. Look he's getting up midnight said as she pointed at the screen, accidentally slapping Azawa across the face. We can see that. Azawa said more tired than annoyed. Had enough young Luffy. All Might said as he approached the center of the crater. Please don't tell me this is it. And I was starting to enjoy it. You kidding? Luffy said as he got out of the small hole he was in, with a classic D smile on his face. We're just getting started. The ha 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 after all of that and you still smile you truly impress me, young Luffy All Might said as his own smile began to grow. I have no doubt, if I had met you before young Midoriya, I can confidently say that you would have been my pick. We are so alike after all. Beer second Luffy said as his skin turned pinkish and his hands a shiny black. Gomu Gomu no. Oklahoma All Might said as he started running towards Luffy with his fist at the ready. Eagle Bazooka Smash. The power of the combined attacks further increased the size of the crater, while also creating a small tornado and launching the two opponents a fair bit of distance away from each other. Nice reflexes. All Might said after punching through the ground where Luffy's head was at. Luffy proceeds to dodge every attack All Might throws at him, even rolling through his feet to avoid a Carolina Smash. The way you dodge it reminds me of an old friend. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Luffy said as he and All Might panted lightly for air. It is, I could go for hours against him and not land a single hit. All Might said as he remembered his sparring session with his former sidekick. Yeah, I know what that feels like. Luffy said as he remembered his fight with Katakuri. Still, it wouldn't really matter if I could hit you now, would it? All Might said as he began looking for a piece of metal. Ah this will do nicely All Might said as he picked up a metal pipe, no longer than his arm. Since you're made of rubber, blunt attacks don't have that much of an effect on you, right, huh? Luffy watched as All Might pinched the piece of pipe above where his hand grabbed it at the base, he then proceeded to turn that pipe into a makeshift sword by making an edge with his fingers. What? Awesome I have no idea if this makes sense. And say I really know how to swing a sword. All Might said as he sliced a fire hydrant in half. But, as they say in America. There's a first time for everything. All Might with a sword. As always said as he watched Luffy dodge All Might slices. Now I've seen everything. What does he think he's doing? Recovery girl said as she shook her cane at the screen. Does he want to dismember that child? I think he'll be stopping when he touches skin. Snipe said as Luffy dodged a slice that cut a lampist in half by accident. Probably. Still, Luffy's dodges are beyond impressive. Nezu said. The only thing similar to this is Night Eye's quirk I'd have to say. Maybe he has a quirk that lets him see in the future. Ectoplasm said as he watched his dodges very closely. We can't take any possibility out. Nezu said as they watched Luffy catch the sword with his blackened hands. He may very well have that ability, however unlikely. Gomu Gomu no Hawk Stomp Luffy said as he delivered an uppercut with his hockey-covered feet while his hands were preoccupied with holding the sword. Ouch All Might said as he rubbed his chin. Not bad at all, young Luffy. Ugh, I'm hungry, Luffy said as his stomach growled. I'm sorry, but I think it's time to end this. I'm afraid the only way to stop our fight is when one of us surrenders or gets knocked out. All Might said as he watched Luffy bite his blackened forearm. Don't worry, I know. Luffy said before grabbing a huge breath of air. Gear forth, gear forth. This is new. All Might watched as Luffy's entire body began to inflate with air, mainly his torso and arms. He inflated to twice the size he was previously, now being roughly the same size as All Might. His legs and his massive arms now supported a red tint to the usual black. The straw hat fell on his back, his head being too big to support it. One hand was in front of him fully open and to the side like he was using it to aim, while the other was hocked back as a fist. Bounce Man Luffy said as he began to bounce up and down. All Might had to wipe his eyes to make sure he wasn't seeing things. He, that's new. All Might said as Luffy continued to bounce up and down. Can you you can't stop bouncing, can you? Yeah, it's a bit of a downside. Luffy said which made All Might sweat drop. I I'm not seeing things right. Present Mick said as he looked in complete disbelief at Luffy. I like that is Luffy, right? Like Luffy Luffy. Right, you're not making any sense. As always said, himself having quite a hard time believing. That's quite the transformation. A bit goofy if you ask me. It doesn't need to be serious, as long as it's powerful. Ectoplasm said. A bit of a downside he says, how is he supposed to move? Recovery girl asked rhetorically. By jumping around, how did he even do that? Thirteen asked, not expecting an answer. I think he blew air into his muscles, then using his stealing quirk, he compressed all the air he blew. Nezu was pretty much spot on. He used multiple quirks at the same time for a transformation. Cementus added. 
pretty ingenious. Well young Luffy, let's put this new gear to the test, shall we? All Might said as he ran at Luffy, hoping to deliver a haymaker to his face. Luffy, using his future sight, dodged the attack by sidestepping, which made him jump further than he meant to. Whoa, I see a serious mobility issue here. All Might said as he watched Luffy bounce around all over the place. After a couple of seconds, Luffy finally settled down. I am seriously underwhelmed here, young Luffy. I expected better. All Might said, only for his word to be caught up in his throat when he saw Luffy fly straight to him. What the? Time to end this Luffy said as he began flying towards All Might. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as his arm began to pull back, compressing it until it reached a third of the length it was once. Uh oh. All Might said as he prepared to block Luffy's incoming attack. Gong Gun Luffy said at the exact moment he released his compressed fist and made contact with All Might. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 buildings. All Might was smashed through 12 buildings. Luffy had to fly to reach All Might. He was ready to continue fighting, but he saw. Huh? All Knight's brother? Luffy asked as he began to deflate. What's he doing here? Why is he sleeping in all this rubble? Well that was certainly educational. Nezu said as the camera panned to a knocked out All Might. Yeah, very educational. Azawa said as he watched Luffy start to poke All Might. A real eye opener. Okay, okay. Let's put the fact that he can fly aside for now. Present Mick said as everybody was still processing what they just watched. He just knocked out All Might, Japan's NR. One hero in one punch. Midnight said, she herself having a hard time believing what she was seeing. Yeah, ahem. Recovery girl. Snipe snapped the elderly heroine out of her trance. Ah, yes. Of course. Recovery girl said as she got her first aid kit and started to go check on All Might. Well, it's powerful alright. Ectoplasm said as they watched Luffy starting to carry All Might on his back, back to the exit. Oh, before I forget. Nezu said as he pushed the button on the microphone stand. Congratulations Luffy. Luffy stopped in his tracks as he started looking around for the speaker. You defeated All Might, you won the fight, eh? Then where's he? I can't see him anywhere. Luffy said as he continued his walk. That's All Might on your back. Nezu said after being stumped by sheer disbelief. What? No way Luffy said before getting a good look at the person on his back. Ooh so that's why they feel so similar I was wondering where he went. Why did you tell him? Azawa asked Nezu after muting the microphone. I think anyone that can beat All Might deserves to know who he is. Nezu said as he began going to the door. You only say that because you can count on one paw the number of people who can beat him. Azawa said tiredly. Well, whatever. I still need to process what just happened. Yes, I agree. 13 said as she also left the room. I don't think it has sunk in yet. That a student defeated All Might. I'll have to rewatch that fight. Snipe said, following 13 out of the room. Whoa well, email it to me midnight said behind him. Don't you have access to the school's database? Snipe asked. Oh, well you see. I kinda forgot my password. Midnight said which made Snipe let out a sigh. Back with Luffy and All Might. Boy Granny Luffy yelled when he saw Recovery Girl in the distance. I'm here, you don't have to shout. Recovery Girl said. I still can't believe this kid defeated Yutashinori. In your prime, would you have? Oh, sorry Granny. So where do you want this guy? Luffy said as he got closer to her. Just follow me. Recovery Girl said as she began going back to the school. I'll take him to my office. Hopefully, you didn't break anything. Nah, don't worry. He's tough. Luffy said as he walked side by side with her. For a second there, I thought I would have to go gear 5. Do you still have more? Recovery girl said in disbelief. Well, duh. I got gear 5th. Plus, I have my other forms of gear 4th. Luffy asked as he walked without a care in the world. No oh, other forms? Recovery girl asked with a slight stutter. When was the last time she stuttered she wondered. Yeah, I have snake man for speed and tank man for defense. Luffy said. Besides, I didn't even use Ryu on that punch. Aha. Uh -huh. Recovery girl said as they neared the school while looking at the straw hatter. Nezu, where the hell did you find this kid? Chapter 14. Aoirozu Mansion. Luffy Momo said as she rushed towards Luffy, who had just entered the mansion. She proceeded to grab both of Luffy's cheeks and stretch them where the hell have you been? Do you know what time it is I was worried sick. So he let go Luffy said before starting to rub his red cheeks. I just got holed up at school, no big deal. No big deal. It's 1 a.m. as in 1 in the morning, there's no reason for you to have been so late, especially with the driver. Momo said as her anger started to subside and worry began to take its place. But it's fine, I'm here so what's the problem? Luffy said with an annoyed expression before he heard his stomach growling. I'm hungry. Luffy, you do know I am your chaperone right? Momo said with a very heavy sigh. 
that means that I'm supposed to take care of you, I would have been in a lot of trouble if I lost you, but I didn't get lost, I was just fighting all night, Luffy said as he began going to the kitchen, Momo followed after him. Momo not registering what he said yet. Plus, you're my friend, my first real friend. I wouldn't know Momo said as they neared the kitchen. Wait. Did you just say all might? Yeah, all night. Luffy said his name wrong again. All Might, our teacher, the number one hero in Japan. That All Might. Momo said with a bewildered expression. That's what I said. Luffy said as they entered the barren kitchen. Huh? Why why? Momo said she didn't know if she should be concerned or shocked. I don't know, something about the written test. Luffy said as he took five chunks of cooked meat from the fridge. The written exam? Why we wait before that, are you okay? Why how are you not in the hospital? Momo asked as Luffy started ravaging the cold food like there was no tomorrow. He was too hungry to heat it up. What do you mean how? Luffy asked back. Why would I go to the hospital if I'm okay? You don't mean you won, right? Momo asked after barely processing what she just heard. A Luffy said before entirely swallowing three pieces of meat at once. Are you okay? Momo began to hyperventilate, and her eyes paced madly. She knew Luffy was strong, but that strong. In her mind, All Might was this unbeatable hero, a force nothing could compare to it. When you say you won, you mean he surrendered right. He didn't go all out. Momo asked as Luffy began getting other various pieces of meat from the giant fridge. Surely that's what he meant, right? No, I knocked him out. Wait, get this, All Night and All Night's brother are the same person crazy right? I was completely shocked. Luffy said as he began eating again, not realizing he had just revealed a top secret. Luffy, you're not saying a lot, but at the same time you're saying way too much. Momo said as she rubbed her temples. Huh? Luffy questioned with a confused expression. First things first. You knocked him out. Momo asked, trying to sort this whole mess out. Yes. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy, I had to go to fourth gear to do it, no wonder he's the strongest guy here. Luffy said as he ate without a care in the whole wide world. Must have been some show huh? Momo asked, curious about what his fourth gear would look like. Yep, and when I found him, he was like a skeleton. Luffy explained further. Knocked out, I had to carry him to the nurse. After that they told me to go home and that I'll find the results tomorrow. Oh and not to tell anyone about this whole fight, I don't know why. Oh well, too late now I guess. I'm not surprised, don't worry I'll keep your secret. Momo said before starting to process in silence. Well, as much silence as she could get with Luffy's loud chewing. So, if All Might is the strongest hero in Japan, and Luffy beat him, that means that Luffy is the strongest, and he's the same age as me. She imagined that this thought would make her jealous, after all, she knew that she was in the same grade as Luffy, and she knew that there was a gap between her and Luffy, but she didn't know that the power gap was that big. But she didn't, instead, she only felt her respect grow for Luffy, and she was filled with proud feelings and admiration. Plus, if Luffy trains me hard enough, maybe I'll be as strong as him one day. Well Luffy, that was a bombshell you just dropped on me. Momo said as she started going to her room, Luffy was wondering what bomb she was talking about. I'm going to sleep, don't forget to take a bath and go straight to sleep, you're dirty. Good night, new Luffy whined as he watched her leave. Anything but that. Luffy said as he dropped to his knees. He already took a shower the other day, and now he has to again. Unacceptable. Good night Luffy Momo said again as she waved without looking at him, hiding a cheeky smile. Class 1 a classroom, I look forward to hearing all of your stories from camp. Mina said through hiccups, she was sure that she, along with Kaminari, will definitely not go to the camp. What's the big deal? Just come along anyway. Luffy said as he picked through his nose. Oh, I know just sneak on with us. Class rep that sort of suggestion isn't becoming of this prestigious school, Iida said as he chopped the air in distress. No need to be so sad maybe they'll let you guys come with us anyway, Izuku said as he tried to remain positive. You don't have to lie to the Midoriya, you're just giving them false hope. Siro said as he put his hand on Izuku's shoulder. Don't you get it Midoriya? The teacher said that everybody who failed the exams doesn't get to go. Kaminari said as he thrust two of his fingers into Midoriya's eyes. Don't you understand? Aahh why me Izuku screamed as he clutched his eyes. Besides, I'm not sure I'll get to go either since Mineta literally carried. I was knocked out for the whole match. Siro said, which inflated Mineta's ego to an ungodly degree. They quickly engulfed the classroom with noises of Luffy laughing his ass off at Izuku's misfortune, Izuku screaming from the pain, Mineta's gloating, Mina crying, and Kaminari's despair. Once the bell rings you should be in your seats, Azawa said loudly as he energetically opened the door, quickly silencing the whole class. As everybody got in their seats, Azawa couldn't help but watch Luffy. This kid is stronger than that buffin. And he is acting like it's no big deal, even if Luffy isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, I would expect at least some bragging or something. It's like he doesn't even realize what he did yesterday. Morning. 
Unfortunately, there are a few of you who didn't pass the practical. Mina and Kaminari straightened their backs immediately as sweat began to form on their foreheads. So when it comes to the training camps everyone is going, the last minute twist everybody who failed thought. We all get to go camping. Kaminari said happily. Seriously? Mina followed. Yahoo we all get to go Luffy cheered from the back, happy that nobody'll get left behind. Nobody noticed Izawa's gaze that lingered on Luffy. Fortunately nobody bombed the written exam. Izawa explained but was interrupted. Seriously? Luffy didn't fail. Kirishima said what everybody else was thinking. That's weird, he even got caught up at the end yesterday. Jiro said as she twiddled her earphone jacks. Originally he did fail, but after a second try with some different circumstances, he managed to succeed. Azawa informed the class as he followed Nezu's lie. He didn't like it, but he also didn't want the class to know Luffy fraud and won against All Might. It would spark an outcry, and the students' faith in All Might would lessen. Huh? Why is the rubber brain getting special treatment? Bakugu said, some of the others were thinking about it, but they didn't want to say it out of respect for Luffy. Because this school has recognized his potential. Bakugu scattered that. And taking into account his past, this school decided to make a special exception. Any more questions? Or can I continue with the lesson? After some more information on why they decided to let the other students who failed attend the summer camp, the class decided to go on a big shopping spree tomorrow at the mall. The mall, oh. Hey guys Luffy said as he spotted the rest of his classmates in a crowd of people. He started running and waving at them, leaving Momo behind. Wait Luffy don't make a scene Momo said only to fall on deaf ears. Oh hey look it's the rep. Kirishima said as he spotted Luffy running towards them. Do you think he realizes the scene he's making? Asui asked after Luffy stumbled on a family, accidentally entangling himself with the children. I don't think he cares. Yuraka said as she watched with a sweat drop the parents yell at Luffy, while Momo was bowing her head repeatedly to the family. And believe he's our class's representative. Jiru said as Luffy finally arrived. This place is awesome, Luffy said as he started looking at all the stores with stars in his eyes. An angry tired Momo was behind him. I know right this place is totally awesome, with so many stores you can buy almost anything you can think of Mina was right there with Luffy, sharing his enthusiasm. I can't wait to buy some delicious me Luffy stopped his very expected sentence with a quick turn of his head. Now he looked with a frown towards a huge crowd. Not realizing that the rest of the class started splitting up. Um? Rep. Mina asked Luffy and then looked at where he was looking. Saw something that caught your eye. Nah, just felt someone familiar. Luffy said ominously. Oh well, if he doesn't bother me then I don't care. Um, okay. Mina said before turning towards the rest of the group. So where do you want guys to go, huh? Where's everybody? Luffy said before doing a quick search with his hockey. Oh crap did we get lost? Mina panicked as she started searching, looking around and seeing nobody she recognized. No, they are all here. Just spread out. Luffy said as he managed to locate everybody. They're all at different stores. You don't say. They must have all split off to buy whatever they wanted. Oh, man I wanted to stick together what's the point in coming here together if we all split off anyway, Mina said as she started sulking, a depressing aura enveloping her. Hey, I'm still here. Let's just go together Luffy as he extended his hand toward her. Grab my hand so we don't lose each other. Sure, I guess it's better than nothing. Mina said with a heavy sigh as she grabbed his hand. Hey what's that supposed to mean Luffy said angrily, insulted. Don't worry about it, let's just go. Mina said as she started going up an escalator. Luffy close behind her. Don't I and Luffy was interrupted by the stairs suddenly moving. Whoa awesome Luffy said in pure childish glee as he looked at the moving stairs, completely forgetting his fight. The Hahamina laughed out loud before hiding her laugh behind her hand as she watched Luffy look at the moving stairs like it was his first time seeing them before trying to go down, but only managing to stay in place. You're such a child. Hey what's that supposed to mean? Luffy said angrily as he completely forgot about the stairs. Why don't you come and say that to my face? Luffy's provocation only made Mina laugh harder. Sorry sorry, I just can't help it. I guess out of everyone, I'm happy that it's him. Huff, if you're sorry then it's fine. Luffy said with a smile as he got off the moving stairs, only to trip at the point where the stairs start looping around. This obviously made Mina laugh. There's never a dull moment with you here, is there? Mina said as she wiped a tear from her eye. It's not my fault I just forgot that they do that, Luffy said from his spot on the ground, Mina now passing by him. Sure sure, whatever you say. Mina said with a cheeky smile. Here. Mina said as this time, she extended her hand for Luffy. Soon they began going to their respective stores as they held each other's hands. So rep, what do you want to buy? Mina asked in an attempt to fill the dead air. Hmm. I don't know. Luffy answered. You don't know? Then why did you come here? Mina asked puzzled. To have fun, obviously Luffy said. You, yeah, I get what you mean, a trip to the mall is fun. 
As for me, I just want some sunscreen, some flip-flops, and a backpack. Nina said, thinking the camp trip was going to be a fun vacation. Oluffy suddenly said, yanking Mina's hand. Look there what's that. Looks fun. Easy there Mina said as she rubbed her shoulder. That. You mean the arcade. Oh the arb of Luffy said as he watched the shiny lights. Not even close. Mina said, referring to the way he pronounced arcade. Wanna go. Let's go Luffy said as he started jogging, surprising Mina and almost making her fall. You're gonna pop my joint Mina said as she tried to keep up with Luffy's pace. Shishishishishi sorry Luffy said as he arrived inside. Whoa awesome. Damn it Luffy, I have no idea how Momo deals with you. Mina said as she started panting, also releasing her hold on his hand. What's that Luffy said as he ran to an arcade game. Hit them all. Ah, I see you have great taste. Mina said as he followed Luffy from behind. This here, my friend, is a game where you can call me the master. Wow really? Luffy said while looking at Mina with stars in his eyes. Yes believe it or not, I used to spend a lot of time at arcades. And I don't want to brag or anything, but I do have top scores in bunch of games here. Mina bragged, her ego getting inflated by Luffy's stare. Awesome what's that? Luffy asked what a top score was. Doesn't matter, let Mina here teach you how to play. Mina said before starting to go to the desk with an elderly employer. Let's go get some tickets, sure Luffy said as he followed after her. Ah the elderly man said as he noticed the two young teenagers approach. How many tickets for the couple? Just two for no Mina said before fully realizing what he said. Wait a sec old man we are not a couple, Mina said as she gestured towards them. A couple of what? Luffy asked, oblivious to what they were talking about. Don't worry about it, Mina said with purple cheeks rather than the usual pink. Just give us the damn tickets grandpa. She accentuated her point by throwing some money on the table. Here you go. He said with a sly smile as Mina snatched the pieces of paper from his hand. Have fun you too. Thanks Gramps Luffy said before Mina forcibly took his hand, making him spin the other way. Whoa. Come on rep Mina said with an angry smile before looking at her hand and noticing she was hand holding Luffy again and proceeding to let go of his hand as they arrived back at the mold game. Now at the game, she inserted the two tickets in and gave Luffy his squishy hammer. Okay? Luffy said as he started holding a squishy hammer. Soon, some moles are gonna pop out, what you wanna do is hit them as many as possible as quickly as you can. Trust me, it's tons of fun Mina said as she picked up her respective hammer and waited for the countdown. Okay Luffy said before turning to his game, fully concentrated with his tongue sticking out. 3, 2, 1 go Luffy heard his game say. Crash whoops Luffy said as he looked at the now completely pummeled arcade game. Was that too hard? Crap Mina said as she looked in horror at Luffy's game before she threw her hammer away and grabbed Luffy's hand. Run, huh? Okay Luffy didn't really understand why, after all, he did what Mina said. So he ran towards the exit, only to be met by a security guard. Stop right there he said as he tried to stop the two teenagers. Luffy whatever you do, don't stop understand. Mina said as she proceeded to run full speed at the security guard. She didn't even realize she used his name. Let's split. Okay Luffy said as she released her hold on Luffy's arm and ran in another direction. Damn brats the guard said as he tried to catch Mina, only for her to dodge and leave him with Luffy. Stop. No way Luffy said as he held out his tongue. Blee this infuriated the guard and made him tackle Luffy, only for Luffy to jump over him and face plant the guard into the ground. Mina barely held in her laughter when she saw Luffy use the guard as a springboard. Hey, I think I lost him, Luffy said as he caught up with Mina, she was now huffing near the balcony where you could see the entire mall. Hey rep, and no there is no losing these guys, they got us on camera if they catch us, then we're toast Mina said as she prepared herself to run again. I see, well then Luffy said he put Mina on his shoulder, potato sack style. Our rep. Mina said as her cheeks turned purple. W wa. Old tight Luffy said as he jumped off the balcony and back to the first floor. Mina screamed her heart out along the way. Hey Kaminari, you're not gonna believe this, but I just saw the rep jump off this floor with a shido on his shoulder. Mineta said as he looked at where they jumped off. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. Kaminari said as he exited a dirty store. Damn it, Luffy, you're gonna give me a heart attack, Mina said as she tried to stop her beating heart, the fact that Luffy was laughing didn't help her. Shishishishi sorry, my bad. Luffy said as he rubbed the back of his head. Huh, what now? Mina said as she looked where Luffy was looking, only to see Shikaragi in a grey hoodie, no hand on his face, and a scared to death Izuku and a worried Achako. Yep Mina proceeds to hide behind Luffy, clutching his clothes, just barely poking her head out to see what's happening. It's the guy from the amusement park, Shibasushi Luffy said with a stone cold face. It's Shigaraki you damn brat Shigaraki said angrily, before quickly calming down, not wanting to make a scene in public. That's what I said. Luffy said before looking at his arm. How's your hand? Better now, no thanks to you. Shigaraki said. Time seemed to stand still for the students present. 
please Luffy, just don't do anything dumb to make him mad thought pretty much everyone there. Mina, after getting some of her courage back, took a closer look at Shigaraki's face. His face was in one word crusty, with his pale blue hair covering the top part of his face and evident scratch marks on his neck. You, you're so ugly, go get some cream or something. Mina's mouth spoke before her brain could stop her. Ashido did the dumb thing. Izuku and Yuraka thought bewildered. Perhaps sorry Mina said as she completely hid behind Luffy. Stupid 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 stupid. A word of advice monkey D Luffy, next time we see each other, things are gonna go differently. Shigaraki said as he started walking towards Luffy and then passed him, making Mina switch sides so that she was hiding in Luffy's chest now. You better be prepared. And soon, he blended in with the crowd, making the others unable to see him, besides Luffy. Luffy stayed on edge until Shikaragi exited the mall. What the hell was that about? Mina asked after giving up on trying to spot him. I don't know, he just wanted to talk to me about Stain for some reason. Izuku said as he caressed his neck. I can't believe he did this in a mall, there are so many innocent people here, Yuraka said as she got up, clearly frustrated but mostly worried. He's gone. Luffy said, slightly surprising the three students. He just left them all, thank goodness for that. Izuku said as he began to relax. He really did want to talk. Soon after, Yuraka told the police what had happened, and the students told the police officers their experience, and Momo was forced to pay for one destroyed arcade game, safe to say that Luffy got an earful rivaling that of Nami's. Training camp, everybody get inside the bus in the correct order please Iida proclaimed loudly in front of the bus's door, his hands were, of course, doing their best to imitate a broken robot. Shut the hell up four eyes, nobody cares. Bakugu said as he entered the bus, baffling Iida in the process. The Bakugu we, as a class, should follow the correct order, and the class hierarchy Iida was planning on using his position to persuade Bakugu, only to be interrupted by the class representative. Finally let's go Luffy said as he ran inside the bus, soon the whole class followed after him, Iida being the last to enter with a sulk. Now that the whole class was making hell on earth on the bus, Luffy being at the center of it, Azawa tried to calm everyone down, but, since nobody heard him, he decided to let everyone have their fun, it would be the last they would have in a while. Now after about two hours of straight driving, the bus made a pit stop at a cliffside where you could see a beautiful forest. The Osh we arrived Luffy said energetically as he jumped out of the bus. Every student followed after him, all sore for sitting so long. Ugh, I feel like my back is gonna snap. Momo said as she cracked her back, Jiro was seen sulking in a corner after hearing this. Wow so cool Luffy said as he looked at the forest. So this is where we're camping, huh? I don't think so, there should be a cabin or something. Kirishima said with a hand on his hip. This place really reminds me of my home island, Luffy said with a smile before it quickly disappeared, now sporting a sad face. Yeah, homesickness is the worst. Kirishima said in an attempt to comfort the now depressed Luffy. Hey there racer. Luffy and the others heard a voice coming from a car parked there. It's been a while. A racer said with a bow as two heroines exited the car. Your feline fantasies are here say meow. One of the girls said as she did a little dance. She wore a cat-centric hero outfit in the color red with medium brown hair. Perfectly cute and cat-like girls the other one said, continuing the dance. This one was very similar to the previous one, except her hair was blonde and her outfit was focused on the color blue. You can call us the wild wild hussy cats, they both said in unison as they finished their dance in a pose. Most of the students found their dance embarrassing or they just didn't care. The only two that cared were. Awesome that was so cool, Luffy said as he watched the heroines with pure admiration in his eyes. No, it wasn't. Thought Yuraka and Jiru. They are a four-person rescue hero group who specializes in mountain rescues Izuku said, sharing his admiration with Luffy. They were founded when we were kids, like forever ago this marks their twee. Izuku was stopped by the blonde-haired heroine by grabbing his face with her oversized cat mittens. Your math must be wrong, I'm 18 at heart, understood. Izuku said, fear clearly evident in his voice, the other students thought that this was just sad. We own this whole plot of land. The brunette-haired heroine said while pointing in the middle of it. The place we'll be staying at is over there. Yosh let's go Luffy said, already jumping over the railings but was stopped by Azawa's scarf. Calm down, not yet. Azawa said as he pulled Luffy next to him and made a cocoon of him with his head sticking out. I don't understand. Why are we all the way here then? Yuraka said with a finger on her chin. I think we all know the answer to that. Asui said as she turned towards the bus. Um guys, let's head back to the bus. Siro said, already turning around. Right now it's about 9.30 in the morning. You might make it there by noon if you're fast about it. The brunette heroine said with a dangerous undertone in her voice. No way Kirishima said as he and everybody else started to gun it toward the bus. Panda quickly formed in the class. Hey let me go, Luffy said as he struggled to get out of his cocoon. You should have already guessed students, the training camp already started. 
Azawa said as the blonde heroine jumped in front of the bus and made a quick landslide to send most of the students over the cliff. The only one that was still with the rest of the teachers was a frustrated Luffy. Hey that looks like fun let me out of this thing, Luffy said as he squirmed as hard as he could to get out. Unfortunately, he couldn't activate any gear besides fifth, but he thought that was overkill. Okay, let's go. The blonde heroine said as she entered the car, the brunette sitting in the passenger seat, and Azawa with a cocoon Luffy took the back seats. It should take us about half an hour to get there. If you keep squirming, I will tie you to the car's roof. Azawa threatened Luffy, only for him to get rowdier. I don't care just let me go, Luffy said as he tried his best to break the scarf. What the hell is this thing, something not even All Might can tear apart, so don't even try. As always said, but Luffy took it as a challenge and tried his best to rep it. Oh my, he's a feisty one isn't he? The blonde said as she licked her lips and audibly purred. I like that, listen Luffy, the reason you don't get to go with the other students is because we think it would be pointless to try and train you. As always said as he began explaining, this made Luffy stop trying to break out. After the whole All Might fiasco we, and when I say we I mean a majority of the teachers and the principal, decided to have you help us in training the other students, huh? Luffy said with a tilt of his head. Wait, do you mean, yes, for this camping trip, we and the other students will look at you as a fellow teacher. As always said. That doesn't mean you aren't a student, you will still eat, sleep and relax with your classmates, this just means that you will help train your classmates instead of training with them, and in case of a villain attack, you will have full reign to protect the students, do you accept? Sure sounds like fun Luffy said, not fully grasping at the responsibilities Azawa just put on his rubber shoulders. Well, aren't you a free spirit? The brunette said as she drove the car. Well, let us introduce ourselves then, I'm Mandalay, the leader of the Wild Wild Hussycats, and I'm Pixie Bob, a full-on member and vital piece the blonde heroine said from her seat in the front, making the other adults wonder if the part about vital piece was necessary. We're your fellow teachers they both said in unison. Let's get along, shall we? The yeah, Luffy enthusiastically tried to bump his fist in the air, but remembered that he was still restrained. Hey, can you get this off now? Better not do anything idiotic. As always said as he pulled on a piece of the scarf that stuck out from the cocoon, and soon Luffy was free. With the rest of class 1A. Hey, I wonder where the rep is. Kirishima said as he huffed and puffed from being out of breath after defeating yet another dirt monster. Who knows? He stayed back with Mr. Azawa for some reason. Kaminari said, also panting for air. I'm sure he can take care of himself, he's a big boy. Jiru said as she destroyed a smaller dirt monster with her sound waves. Focus on here and now. Yeah, yeah I know. It's just if we had Luffy here it would have been easier, you know. Kirishima said as he hardened himself. No point in thinking about it now, just focus. Jiru said in a slight scold. Yes, Mom Kirishima and Kaminari said at the same time, and in response, they received a sharp earphone jack. Ow, weirdly, Momo wasn't worried, well at least not as much as she thought she would have been. Ever since she found out about All Might and Luffy, she decided to put a whole lot more trust on Luffy, but in the back of her mind, she couldn't help but worry, at least for a little bit. Chapter 15. The Campsite. Whoa this place is awesome, Luffy said as he looked at the wooden cabin with several concrete rooms attached to it. It was about 9.30 when Luffy and the other teachers started driving, and now it was 11 o'clock. Not too shabby, eh? Mandalay said as she and the other teachers exited the car. This is a plot of land we own, and we'll be free to use our quirks indefinitely. Oh, come to say hi Coda. The child wearing a red cap with two golden horns protruding out the front was unfriendly to say the least, especially when he landed eyes on Luffy. The kid decided to do nothing but glare at the straw hat. Don't worry about him, he's shy. Mandalay said with a bit of a worried expression, she really hoped Coda would grow out of his hatred. This camp could give Coda the new look on heroes he needs. She noticed Luffy approaching the child. What's up? I'm Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm gonna become the king of the pirates, Luffy said with a giant smile on his face as he extended his arm toward Coda. Nice to meet ya. Mandalay and Pixie Bob gave a very confused look towards Azawa, who in turn just shook his head in a way that said either he's crazy. Or just don't worry about it. The heroines decided to go with the latter, but didn't know that Azawa actually meant both. Coda, instead of accepting Luffy's hand, decided to hock his arm backward and give a mean sucker punch straight to Luffy's family jewels. Thankfully, Luffy managed to catch his fist before making any contact. Hey Coda that's not nice Mandalay scolded Coda from afar, but the kid just ripped his arm out of Luffy's grip and took the walk of shame back to his room, not making any eye contact. What a weird kid. Luffy said as Coda entered the cabin. I'm sorry about him, he's been having a hard time since his parents died, please don't pay it too much attention. Mandalay said as she did a slight bow to apologize on his behalf. It's fine, I don't really care. Luffy said with a finger up his nose, digging for treasure. I have to say, sweet reflexes. Pixie Bob said with a grin. 
Not just anybody could have caught that kind of surprise attack. I guess it's to be expected from someone who beat all night, boo. Luffy asked with a tilt of his head. Enough chit chat. They could arrive any minute now, we should prepare for them. Azawa intervened. I'll go and settle in my room. Okay, then I guess I'll go and make some food for the litter. Pixie Bob said, not wasting a second to go and prepare some meals. Who can I get some? Please. I'm starving Luffy said, very excited at the thought of food. Sue, Nuazawa quickly intervened. If we let Luffy come with you then we won't have any food for the rest of the class, eh? Come on, I promise I won't eat that much. Luffy said, but Azawa knew what Luffy meant by that much. No way, you eat with the rest of the class, and that's final. Azawa said with a tone of finality. Luffy quickly deflated and melted on the ground from pure sadness upon hearing this. Mandalay, why don't you go and show him around? At least this way, we'll be able to get his mind off of food. Sure, he should at least know where everything is. Mandalay agreed. Come on Straw Hat, let's go, I'll give you a tour of the place. Really? Okay Luffy quickly agreed, already forgetting about his past depression. Wow, he really does have a one-track mind doesn't he? Must be nice. Mandalay thought to herself with a small smile as she and Luffy went inside. The cabin wasn't anything too special, actually in comparison to Momo's mansion, it was pretty lacking. But it was to be expected since the students will spend most of their time outside. The only rooms that caught Luffy's eyes were the kitchen and dining hall, the student dorms, and the hot spring. And that concludes our tour what do you think? Mandalay asked as she arrived back to where they started. It was pretty fun, I can already tell, this place is gonna be lots of fun, Luffy said with a small chuckle at the end. Let's hope so, I want this place to be a place of teaching and learning for the students. There are two more of us in our little team, but they aren't here right now, they should arrive tomorrow morning. Mandalay said as the wind breeze drew her hair, as she looked mystified at the cabin. The next generation of heroes is here, and it's our job to train them to the best of our capabilities. Sure this place actually reminds me a lot of my own training, both times actually. Luffy said as he sat down on a log. Both times? Mandalay asked, now sitting across from him, if she could get some insider scoop of how this kid was trained to the point of defeating All Might, then maybe she'll be able to put his knowledge to good use in the future. Yeah the first time was when I was 7, that's when I started having about 100 matches each day with my brothers. Luffy said, with a nostalgic expression on his face. 100 matches? Didn't you have school or something? Mandalay asked bewildered. Unfortunately, she didn't get the memo from Nezu about Luffy's past. School. That stuff is for nerds. Luffy said smugly, even though he was going to school right now. This made Mandalay sweat drop. Also, there was my grandpa, he threw me in a bottomless pit, a jungle, and tied me to a bunch of balloons. All that to make me stronger. Well, I guess it worked. Mandalay said after a few seconds of trying to process what she just heard. You betcha I'm one of the strongest there is Luffy said as he spread his arms to make a point. You said both times, what's the second one? Mandalay asked, genuinely curious. Ah, that was when I was with Rayleigh for two years. I trained day and night, fighting monsters and beasts. After I got sent away from my crew, I realized that I wasn't strong enough to protect them. Luffy's face started to look sadder and sadder as he spoke. And now I'm here, without them, I have no idea where they are or how they're doing. I, I miss them, I miss them so much. Hey, let me show you another place, one that I haven't shown you before. Mandalay said after a couple of seconds of looking at Luffy, who started to get more and more depressed. She didn't know what Luffy was feeling, from what he sounded, it was like a child who recently lost his family. But unlike Koda, he is bottling up his feelings, whereas Koda doesn't bother with hiding them. I don't really understand what he means by crew, but I know that he needs help. Sure. Luffy said as he sat up, gone now that unmistakable happy-go-lucky attitude. His feelings were like a floodgate, once opened to take some serious effort to close it. After walking a bit in silence, they arrived at a pretty big portrait, way bigger than it needs to be. About two years ago, Koda's parents were murdered. They were heroes and died on the job, a noble death if there ever was one. But little Koda was inconsolable, he was still small and didn't understand how the world worked yet, all he thought was that his parents gave their lives for strangers and left him alone. After that, he came to live with me and the other hussy cats, we would often try to cheer him up and many times we would come here. Mandalay interrupted herself by pushing a specific part of the painting, soon the whole painting started to move, revealing a small and dark room. This is a special room, Koda used to love it, but now he hardly ever uses it. He called it the crying room, a bit of a depressing name, but it does its job well. If you ever need some time to just be alone and cry or scream at the world, this is the perfect place. Nobody will ever hear you here. Luffy took one foot inside and saw a small and fluffy bed, with atmospheric lights and a certain warmth coming from the bed. I know it's not much, but, as a hero, it's my job to help everyone in need. 
Mandalay said as she reminisced about the time she would catch Coda bawling his eyes out here. Thanks, but being alone is the last thing I need right now. Luffy said as he exited the room and closed the painting behind him. Luffy wasn't the smartest guy, but he understood that whenever his mind wasn't occupied with something or someone, he'll just think of his lost crew, and he doesn't need that kind of pain in his life right now. I understand, but you do have friends, right? Somebody you can talk to. If not then we always have our school psychiatrist. And, appearances aside, he's very skilled. Bottling up your feelings, it does nothing but harm. Mandalay said in an attempt to further help the teenager in front of her. Luffy, now turned face to face with her, and with the biggest grin he could muster, he said. Don't worry about me, I've survived worse than this. Let's just not talk about it ever again. Okay, as yes, sure. Mandalay said, a bit taken aback by the convincing smile. Now, where is that kitchen? I'm starving, Luffy said as he started to go from door to door to search for some meat. Mandalay was left behind with a troubled expression on her face. Azawa felt a shiver go down his spine, and he could just tell that Luffy was the cause of it. 5.20 p.m., I can feel them there close, Luffy said it like a kid opening his Christmas gift. The sun was beginning to set, leaving the forest and cabin in a beautiful orange glow. That took a lot longer than expected. Mandalay said as she watched a group of battered and beaten up students arrive and plop to the ground in front of them. You said it would only be three hours. Kaminari said in as mad a tone as he could muster. Unfortunately, he didn't have that much energy, mentally and physically speaking. Thus we calculated how long it would have taken us to finish it. Pixie Bob said to the exhausted students. I'm starving, this is hell, Kirishima said as he clung to his tummy. Same Luffy said, which caught the other's attention. Be you damn rubber-brained, pirate wanted, straw hat wearing dumbass where the hell were you? Bakugo yelled to Luffy who, at the moment, looked like he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Easy now Bakugo, there is a reason why Luffy didn't do the course with you and why he won't train this week. As always said, which caught the attention of the other students, now all of them were looking at their homeroom teacher. Luffy will be a teacher for this week. If it weren't for the students trying to catch their breaths, it would have been complete silence. Hey that's a funny joke Mr. Azawa. Kaminari said in disbelief. It's very funny. Siro added. Hilarious even. Mina added from her spot on the ground. But we're like, too tired for your jokes. Who said I was joking? Azawa watched as everyone's faces grew from disbelief to despair, and he couldn't help but smile. New Mina yelled at the top of her lungs. God please, if I've done anything to offend you, tell me what it is, and I'll rectify it. Mineta said as he got on his knees and started to beg. Anything besides girls. Actually, I just remembered I left the the, the oven at home on. Yep, I totally did that, gotta get back home before my house burns down. Kaminari said as he started going back, but a foot cramp left him in the dirt. Well, I guess I should start writing my will. Siro said with a face that said that he accepted it. I don't understand why you are all freaking out, I've been training with him for months, and you don't see me complaining about it. Momo said as she got up from her spot, her increased endurance and stamina was already showing from her fights with Luffy. Oh yeah? And how many times did you break a bone? Kaminari asked. How many times? That's a foolish question. Momo said, which surprised some of her classmates. Kaminari, do you count the grains of sand at the beach? Or the stars in the night sky? This just made everyone fall into deeper despair. The rubber brain teaching me. Finally now I'll find his secret, I'll know what makes him so strong, and then I'll leave him in the dust. Bakugu said with a feral grin on his face. Training with Luffy. I don't know if I should be excited or scared for my life. Izuku thought as he looked at Luffy who was just confused as to why everyone was so hopeless. Perfect I will finally be able to ask Luffy how to do his shave technique without sounding desperate a truly positive turn of events. Iida said with happiness in his eyes. The rep is a teacher. Todoroki thought as he looked at Luffy who was messing with his classmates. Can he even teach me anything? They all seem really scared of Luffy for some reason. Mandalay said as she got closer to Azawa. Oh, I know the reason. Azawa said as he remembered Luffy versus All Might. Don't worry, you will too. Oh yeah, I've been wondering since we got here. Izuku said, which quickly stopped all other conversations from happening. Who is that? Izuku said as he pointed at Kota. Oh, this little guy. He's my cousin's son who lives with us now. Mandalay said, a bit worriedly, hoping what happened with Luffy earlier won't happen again. Don't be shy now Kota, say hi to everyone. They'll be living with you for the next week. Hey there, my name's Midoriya. I'm from the UA High School Hero Course. It's nice to meet you, Izuku said as approached Kota until he was face to face with him and extended his hand. And lo and behold, history repeated itself. The only difference is, Izuku didn't catch his fist. Iida had to rush to Izuku's side to catch him from falling due to the intense pain. What a low blow you fiend of a child a punch to the scrotum is unforgivable, Iida berated Kota who was leaving. 
Luffy was heard laughing his ass off, and Mandalay just face palmed at history repeating itself, only worse now. The last thing I want is to hang with some wannab heroes. Kota said, glaring as hard as he could. Wannab? How old are you kid? Ida asked in pure disbelief. The ha 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 Luffy was laughing right in Izuku's face. He don't l laugh. T that just makes it w worse. Izuku begged, but did Luffy listen? Of course not. Enough playing around. Get your stuff off the bus, once the bags are in your rooms we'll have dinner in the cafeteria, after that you can bathe and sleep. Azawa said as he pointed to the bus. Tomorrow your training starts in earnest. You better get a move on, cafeteria, yummy Luffy said as he stuffed his face with all the food he could find, this time everybody fraught for their food, with or without manners. Ow oh, hey, don't try to steal my food and I won't stab you, do you understand? Jiru said as she took her fork out of Luffy's hand. Why are you even eating? You didn't even do anything. Siro asked as he shoved his face with food. Is that a serious question? You've known him what? Two maybe three months. And you're still questioning the mystery that is this dude. Turu said as she grabbed Luffy's face to make a point. I smell beef do you have any? Kirishima asked Pixie Bob across the room. Yeah, geez it's like you kids haven't eaten in a week. Pixie Bob replied. Anyway, this is the last time we'll be doing this for you, so better eat up. Hey Koda, can you bring me those vegetables? Mandalay said, which made Koda, begrudgingly, pick up a box of veggies and deliver them to the kitchen. Thai caught Izuku's eye and made him wonder further why he is the way he is. After a couple more minutes of banter and idle discussion, Luffy suddenly sat up in his chair with a fork and a spoon in hand. What the hell is this? How can you people live with yourselves? You disgust me. What are you talking about, Rep? Mina asked with a confused expression, the same as everyone from inside the cafeteria. Even some of the teachers were confused, besides Azawa, he just looked tired. It's probably something dumb. Jiru said, not even taking her eyes off her rice. This is the most depressing thing I've seen Luffy said before pointing at Azawa, who was standing in the corner silently. Sunglasses turn on the music, I'd rather die. Azawa said, not even thinking about taking part in whatever Luffy is thinking. Fine I'll just do it without you, Luffy said before taking his fork and spoon and started to clank them together in a beat. Is he about to sing? Pixie Bob said with a tray of food on her arms. Yo ha ho ho, yo ha ho ho, inkusu no seik wo, todak na yukri yo, yumikis kimikis namimikis, shio no mukuta, yuhimo saagu, sora nai wa wo kaku, tori no yuta. Luffy sang from the heart, really putting his all in the few words he knew of Brook's song. At first, the students were mostly in silence, some wishing he would stop and others just confused, until. The FTT ha 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 everybody turned their heads to see Mina laughing her heart out. S sorry, I just see can't help it haha ha, she continued laughing as Luffy sang, soon Kaminari joined in her laughter, and then Siro, and then Kirishima, and soon everybody was at the very least giggling or sporting a smirk on their faces. Well, most of them anyway. Damn rubber idiot, I can't do anything with him around. Bakugu said in a mutter as he put his hands over his ears. Hold up, hold up rep I got the perfect beat the invisible girl said as she took out her phone and started playing a happy beat that went pretty well with Luffy singing. It's not a bad song, but it still hurts my ears to hear him sing. Jiru said as she was trying to figure out if she should cover her ears or just bear with the pain. Ah, but that's like the beauty of it, you know. Mina said as she hung an arm around her shoulder and joined in Luffy's singing. A few minutes later, after Luffy finished his song, the mood in the cafeteria reached one that could be considered a party, even if they had hell awaiting them the next day, they all seemed to forget. Even now, Luffy still managed to keep the current mood. Hey Greeny, look at me Luffy said behind Izuku, this prompted some of the other students close to him to turn to face Luffy as well. I a pfffft ha <laughs> Izuku screamed from terror, Jiru choked on her drink from laughing, and Mina just straight up laughed. All this was caused by Luffy, who now had two sticks in his nose and the ends were held by his jaw, making him a truly terrifying creature to some and a clown to others. Luffy you scared the living daylights out of me. Izuku said as he tried to compose himself. Luffy is a class representative, you must set an example for the other students, not fool around Iida started berating Luffy, but stopped and started muttering to himself in a thinking position. Actually, what if our class representative is trying to bring everybody's moods up, while also trying to take everybody's minds off the incoming hard and grueling training that awaits us? Yes, that must be it, huh? You said something glasses. Luffy asked as he took the sticks out of his mouth. Nothing at all, continue doing your duty Iida said with a thumbs up. Luffy just shrugged it off and continued fooling around. I don't get it, what's funny about that? Todoroki asked, him being one of the students close to Izuku. Him living a sheltered life and in constant rebellion against his father, he didn't understand what was so funny. His comment just made everyone around him laugh harder. Huh? Why is everyone laughing? Todoroki asked, genuinely confused. 
the diner in the cafeteria continued in the same manner, Luffy being an idiot and everybody laughing at with him. Hot springs, wow, this looks amazing. Izuku said as he and every other boy came to the boys' bathing space. It was a traditional Japanese hot spring, the hot water steam was made even more visible by the small lights along the base of the pool, and a big bonsai tree was shadowing the hot spring from the moonlight. He first Luffy said as he cannonballed into the water. Rep, that water's not deep enough for that Kirishima tried to warn him, but it was too late. Now they were just waiting for Luffy to resurface. And waited. And waited. Hey, W what are the chances the rep is drowning right now? Ajiro asked, very worriedly. No way, you think he can be a teacher and not know how to swim. Be real. Kirishima said with unwavering respect in Luffy, but he couldn't lie that he wasn't getting worried. Lupe couple of bubbles resurfaced from where Luffy cannonballed. This made everyone panic. Well, everyone besides Bakugou and Todoroki. Crap 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 Luffy's drowning Mineta said as he flailed around. What are we gonna do? Just go save him you idiot. Bakugou said before kicking Mineta into the hot spring. Unfortunately, Bakugou kicked him too hard and missed the pool entirely. This just made everybody panic further. Not to worry I know CPR, I can save him, Iida said as he jumped in the hot spring and took Luffy out, who looked like he just ran 50 marathons while wearing weights on his entire body. The Hudlamoth Mia said. Luffy said, still powerless from being in water. Thanks for saving me. Oh no his lungs must be filled with water make way Iida said, already getting out of the water. I have to perform CPR, huh? Are you sure Izuku asked, clearly very stressed at this sudden turn of events. Quite sure Iida said, full of confidence as he plopped a powerless Luffy on the ground, who was quickly gaining his strength back. This made everybody panic again and even attracted the girl's attention, all the way over the wall. The FT what kind of hero can't handle some water? Bakugou said as he got in the hot spring. Pathetic, it is surprising. I'd expect out of everyone here, Luffy would be the best at handling water. Todoroki said, also getting the water. Him saying he wants to be a pirate and all. Ugh, why are the boys being so loud? Jiru complained. Her quirk made her ears more sensitive, she was starting to get a headache. They're boys, what did you expect? Yuraka said. I'm surprised I don't hear the rep, he's usually the loudest. Yeah, you're right. Momo said as she sunk deeper into the water before quickly resurfacing. Oh no I forgot to tell the boys about Luffy's weakness. His weakness? Mina asked with a tilt of her head. Oh yeah he did say he's weak around water or something Jiru suddenly proclaimed, remembering her internship and the joint operation with Mount Lady and by extension Luffy. Wait, so the rep is weak around water? Asui said. But then he'll know to avoid it, right? It's not like he'll just jump head first into it. Yeah, you're right he's not that dumb. Momo agreed and calmed down. Totally. Mina said. I'm gonna tell them, just to be sure. Momo said as her quirk activated and she started making a megaphone. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just to be sure. Mina agreed. She and the other girls hoped that Luffy wouldn't do something stupid like that, but they knew better. You never know. Back with the boys, Iida right now was sucking the air out of Luffy, while Luffy was frantically waving his arms around in an attempt to get Iida off of him, while the other boys were having serious doubts about Iida's skills as a lifeguard. Hey just so you know Luffy gets drained of all of his energy while he's in water. So, just make sure he doesn't drown, okay? The boys heard Momo's voice over the wall. Ah, I see. Iida said as he removed his lips off of Luffy who was now gasping for air. What cough the hell? Cough cough, Luffy said as he tried to get as much air as he could. Do not worry, I have rescued your life. Iida said, looking very proud. Some of the other boys sweat dropped. Did he though? Cuz to me, it just looked like he was kissing him. Kaminari said to Mineta, who at the moment was too mesmerized with the wall, Momo's voice serving as a reminder of where they were. Representative why did you jump in the water if you knew it was your weakness? Kirishima asked him angrily. Oh yeah Luffy said after compassing himself and remembering what just happened. I forgot shishishishi. You shouldn't be laughing, Kirishima said as he karate chopped Luffy on the top of his head. Damn it rep, how can you forget something so important? Geez, I just forgot. What's the big deal anyway? Everything's fine now right? Luffy said as he went back into the pool, but was quickly stopped. Oh no you don't, Kirishima said as he proceeded to tie Luffy to the tree, using his rubbery arms as rope. There now you won't accidentally kill yourself again, eh? Come on just let me go, Luffy said as he struggled to free his arms, but his sudden encounter with water still left him powerless. So, even the mighty rep has a weakness huh? Bakugou said, now the boys were able to fully enjoy the bath together. Well, almost everyone, Mineta was muttering something to himself as he stared at the wall. But why water? Izuku said, his analytic brain was already at work. It's such a strange and specific weakness, and I can't see any correlation with rubber. Why don't you just ask the rep? Kaminari said before turning to Luffy. 
Hey rep wise your weakness water. HMPH not telling Luffy said, turning his head away from the group of boys. The other boys just sweat dropped at his clear childish behavior. And so, they spent the next 20 minutes just chatting in the pool. Mineta was caught trying to peep, Kota fell off the wall by accident, and Izuku had to take the kid to his cousin. Tomorrow morning, 5.30 am, good morning class, I hope you are all ready for the training program. Azawa said to the still half-asleep class. Right now, they were in a small space where the forest met an open field and met the base of the mountain. For this early program, we'll start off with Luffy. He'll do whatever he thinks is best to make you guys stronger. Is that okay? We, actually, I don't care about your opinions. Azawa quickly stopped any complaints his students were about to make. So Luffy, you have the floor, huh? Yes, I will have more meat. Luffy mumbled in his sleep, actually, he was standing and sleeping at the same time, some of his classmates found this impressive. After a quick slap with a certain scarf, Luffy was awake. Huh? Training. Oh okay. So, what are we doing rep? Kirishima asked, somewhat frightened but at the same time excited. Luffy right now was doing some small stretching exercises. Oh boy. Momo said as she started making several combat-related items. I can't believe he's starting with this so early in the morning. Soon, Luffy was done with his stretches and everybody around him, as Awa included, were just staring at him in confusion. Okay, I'm done let's go. What are you talking about? Kaminari said as Luffy got in a battle stance. This stance worried some people. Azawa, having understood what it actually meant, decided to step aside and let Luffy do his thing. Oh, isn't it obvious? We're starting with a big fight everybody versus me. Now, let's go Luffy said, some of the other students were still hoping that this was a joke. Wait, wait, wait you can't be serious your Raka protested, but stopped when she saw Luffy catch something in his hand, right before it could touch his face. She looked to her side and saw Momo with a gun pointed at Luffy. Momo, damn it, no time to waste guys trust me, just hit him with everything you've got, Momo said as she started reloading. Some of the students were still trying to process what was happening, while others. You don't gotta tell me twice, Bakugu said as he ran towards Luffy, his quirky at the ready. Die. Luffy easily sidestepped his attack and proceeded to grab Bakugu by the face and throw him into an incoming Ida. Sorry guys, but I won't hold back at least, not that much Luffy said with a classic smile on his face. Then we won't hold back either Kirishima said as he and Ajiro got close to him and tried to attack Luffy with all their strength. Only for Luffy to jump upwards, dodging their blows and rearing both of his arms backward. Gomu Gomu no twin pistol Luffy said as he firmly planted both of them into the ground. If it weren't for Kirishima's hardening and Ajiro's tail, they would have been knocked out. An opening Izuku thought as he blasted from the ground towards the falling Luffy. Soon, Izuku was face to face with Luffy. XSSM huh? Izuku was interrupted by Luffy stopping his punch by grabbing his fist. Do slow Luffy taunted as he threw Izuku into a shell-shocked Mineta. Crap help Mineta said as he began running from the flying Izuku, but thankfully Tsu managed to grab Izuku with her tongue and jumped out of the way to regroup and make some sort of plan to defeat Luffy. Thanks Tsu. Izuku said as he felt the wind blow in his hair from falling. Don't mention it. Tsu said as she flexed her legs muscles to prevent any injury from landing on the ground. We just have to make some so. Gomu Gomu no. Tsu heard Luffy start his attack from above her. Now, let me paint a picture. Tsu, with her tongue out, was looking up at Luffy, who had his leg way out of her line of sight, the morning sun shined bright from behind Luffy, so Tsu wasn't able to see much of him besides an outline, but what she did saw was a face-splitting smile. Oh no. Battle axe Luffy, with an axe kick, sent Tsu along with Izuku into the ground, making a small crater in the process. Azawa saw this and proceeded to take out his phone and make a call. Recovery girl. Yeah, I know it's early in the morning, but I need you to come to our camp ASAP. No, nothing happened, it's just that Luffy's training might be a little too much for the other students. You'll be here in two hours. Great. Azawa began to mentally prepare himself for recovery girl's scolding. Ah gotcha a Kaminari said as he somehow managed to sneak up on Luffy and cling to him as if life depended on it. Now eat some of this. Indiscriminate shock 1.3 million volts Kaminari said as he used all of the electricity in his body to shock Luffy out of commission. But, even the idiot form of Kaminari was confused as to why Luffy seemed completely unharmed. You idiot he's made of rubber Jiru said to Kaminari, who at the moment was having a hard time keeping his dinner in his stomach after receiving an elbow from Luffy. Luffy was about to knock out Kaminari completely, but was stopped by a ball of fire from Todoroki. After dodging that ball of fire, Luffy quickly ran towards Todoroki, and as he was about to punch him in the face, he was instead trapped in an iceberg of ice. Got him? Todoroki said as he looked at the massive iceberg with Luffy standing, with his arm hocked back, right in the middle. The class's hopes were quickly stopped as they watched Luffy's hands and legs clad in armament hockey. I'm not liking this, you guys. 
Mina said, fear very evident in her voice. Soon, Luffy's hands and legs began glowing a shiny yellow and little by little the ice began to crack until. Boom the iceberg fully cracked from the pressure of the Ryu hockey Luffy was emitting. Before anyone could even see, Luffy was already face to face with Todoroki, with his hand stretched way back. That was pretty good, you almost got me Luffy said, and before Todoroki could even react. Bullet Luffy's punch broke some of his ribs and sent him flying into a nearby giant boulder. Bull Luffy, using his future sight, dodged a sword slash from Momo. He then proceeded to dodge with ease her other sword swings before growing tired and just straight up grabbing the sword with a blackened hand. That's not gonna work, oh I know that. Momo said as she grabbed Luffy's hand and put him in a chokehold. Now Jiru, alright let's hope these things work. Jiru said as she put a set of headphones on Luffy with her earplugs attached to it. This is gonna hurt, what? Luffy asked, not hearing her due to the headphones, before being absolutely blasted with high-pitched sound. A-A-G-G-H-H my ears Luffy said as he tried to get out of the chokehold, but the deafening sound made it pretty difficult for him. Okay, now this Momo said as she quickly made a small dagger and prepared herself for stabbing Luffy. Whoa are you sure? Mina asked worriedly. I mean, I know we are in a fight or whatever, but one wrong move and you can like, mess him up for good. I know, but it's him or us. Momo said as she thrust her dagger straight into Luffy's side, but stopped before it even met skin, only slightly grazing it. I I can't do it. This small graze, however, managed to bring Luffy back to his senses. He extended his legs straight to Momo's face, breaking her nose in the process, and he quickly removed his headphones. Ah, finally but, I still can't hear anything. Oh well, back to it, uh oh. Jiru said as she watched helplessly Luffy scratch his arm back and spin it. Gomu Gomu no rifle and with one powerful punch, Luffy managed to not only knock out Jiru, but also Yuraka, breaking a few bones in the process. Oh crap gotta do something Mina thought before quickly coming up with a new move. This had better work. Acid wave Mina said as she put all her effort into making as big a wave of acid as she could and sent it towards Luffy. Granted, this being her first time ever doing this move and everything, it wasn't very big, but it was impressive. Oh Luffy said as he looked at the incoming acid wave that dissolved everything it touched besides stone. Luffy, as if a light bulb lit up in his head, blackened his hand and planted them firmly into the ground, and as he took the out, he also took out a massive piece of the ground. He used that piece of ground as a wall, a shield, to protect himself from the acid wave, and it worked. Okay now I just gotta run Mina thought as she ran away, the acid wave was never meant to be a serious attack, just a distraction for her. Unfortunately, the distraction wasn't good enough because she looked at the ground and wondered where that big shadow is coming from, only for her to look up and see a massive piece of stone falling towards her. She just barely managed to dodge it, and when she did, she was met with Luffy's fist. Gomu Gomu no bullet knocking her out instantly while also breaking some bones. Don't count me out just yet, you bastard Bakugu yelled as he flew through the air and prepared himself for a hoitzer impact. Howitzer but before he even registered, Luffy was no longer in front of him, he was actually above Bakugu at the moment. Gomu Gomu no spear you know the drill, Luffy planted Bakugu in the ground, broke a few bones, and got back to defeating other hopeless students. Class 1b, when your muscle fibers break they grow back stronger, thicker. Quirks are the same way, they improve the harder you push them, stronger after every workout. In other words, there's only one thing to do Vlad said as he led his students through a path in the forest to where class 1a was training. You must break yourself, oh Vlad. Morning, we started a bit earlier. Hope you don't mind. As always said as he faced the entire 1B class, who were just looking in disbelief at the scene in front of them. Gomu Gomu no rain, Luffy said as he rained down punches on Kirishima, Mineta, Izuku, Yuraka and Siro. Looks like our temporary teacher is having a field day. As always said, as the newly arrived students were just looking at the scene in front of them with their jaws nearly touching the ground. Students were either knocked out or just faked being unconscious, only a few brave souls had the courage to still fight, but not many. The landscape completely destroyed, trees knocked over, boulders crushed and craters in the ground. It truly looked like a warzone. What the hell is happening? Kendo asked in a low voice before noticing a stick break near Azawa. Please you gotta help me Turu asked class 1b, as well as the teacher. At first, they were confused, but remembered that class 1 had an invisible girl. H is a monster. Found you Turu in class 1B heard Luffy say from a good distance away, and if Turu wasn't invisible, they would have seen how the color drained from her face. Gomu Gomu no pistol Luffy managed to hit the invisible girl perfectly in the face. His punch was so strong that it sent her flying straight in Kendo's arms, knocking her to the ground. Oops sorry about that Kendo heard Luffy's voice as he ran at them. She sat aside the now unconscious invisible girl and stood up to face Luffy. Whoa new people came to join my training. Hell no several students said at the same time, they were all one scare away from just straight up running back to their cabin. Not these ones Luffy. 
They have their own training program and we have ours. As always said, earning a massive sigh of relief from Class 1B and a disappointed sigh from Luffy. Actually, I think this is a good time to take a break, seeing as how nobody can move. Oh, okay I'm kinda tired anyway. Luffy said as he plopped on the ground. As Awa I knew that your class's rep was going to help out during the training, but I didn't expect this, Vlad said as he gestured towards everything. What did you expect? As Awa asked in his regular monotone voice. How could you let this happen? Kendo asked in disbelief. I mean, don't you care at all about your students? Villains won't care that they are students, and while I have to admit that this may have been a bit excessive. As Awa said as he sent a small glare at Luffy. It doesn't change the fact that they are now stronger and more durable, more accustomed to combat and teamwork, and their quirks have strengthened considerably. Well, yeah but are they even going to be able to walk after this? Kendo asked, genuinely worried. Don't worry, recovery girl is on her way as we speak. As Awa said which in all honesty, did help ease the other's mind a bit. So you called her huh? Vlad said. Get ready for an earful. Oh, I know. As Awa said. I'm ready. Ha ah, what kind of captain hurts his crew so bad, I bet you hate them all, I wouldn't blame you. If I was in this miserable class, I would hate them too, this just goes to show you how much bet Monomoa's inevitable rant was cut off by a swift karate chop to his neck. Dude, this is legit the worst time you could pick to insult the other class. Tetsutetsu said to the now knocked out Monomoa before turning to Luffy. If the other class is going through this hellish training, then I also want in so fight me captain, huh? Who are you again? Luffy could swear he saw this guy somewhere, but he forgot. Whoa bro, wait a sec think about it. The guy who can make air into a solid said. Look, you see there, the guy who's in the ground who looks like he was molded in. That guy is Kirishima. If he didn't win, what makes you think you can? That's all the more reason why I gotta fight him to avenge my fallen brother Tetsutetsu said in his usual loud demeanor. Sensei. Please, it is training after all, I don't see why not. Vlad said with a little bit of sweat building up on his forehead. Yes me and you we are fighting now Tetsutetsu said as he steeled himself and went to the warzone. Sure I'm always down to fight, Luffy said as he jumped back on his feet and followed after him. This can only end badly. Kendo said, worrying like a mother. May God bless our classmate, bless him so that he may win. Shiazaki prayed with her hands clasped together. I don't think God can help our friend here sis. Satsuna said as she put her hand on the vine-haired girl's shoulder. Here we go, Tetsutetsu yelled as he rushed Luffy, preparing to punch Luffy straight in the face, and to his and the other's surprise, it actually connected. A. What he found more shocking was that Luffy didn't budge a single inch, not one millimeter from his spot. With the help of Haki, he managed to completely block his attack. Not bad, it just wasn't good enough. Luffy said as he grabbed the steel boy by his shoulders in an iron-like grip. Gomu Gomu no Luffy said as he began to stretch his head way back. Oh no, I remember this one from the festival. Satsuna said, worry clear in her eyes. Get out of there now. I, I can't I can't get his ha. L. Wham Luffy quickly shut him up with a massive headbutt that sent him flying into a nearby tree, breaking it in half in the process. Tetsutetsu Kendo said as he rushed over to him. Anybody else want to fight? Luffy asked the other students. No everybody quickly responded, at this Luffy proceeded to take his place back on the ground. Luffy quickly got back up when he felt four auras quickly approaching, but calmed down when he realized he knew two of them. Your feline fantasy is Mandalay got ready to start off her group's whole intro, but stopped when she saw the warzone with students scattered around. W what happened, Mandalay? What are your ragdoll, one of the new heroines, said. She was much like Pixie Bob and Mandalay, the difference is that her color scheme was yellow with green hair. Whoa did a villain attack or something? No, no, nothing like that. As Awa quickly stopped any panic. Soon, the rest of their group arrived with Pixie Bob and the muscular hero in a cat outfit. It was just Luffy's training. That's some training. Tiger, the fourth and final member of the Wild Wild Hussycats appeared. I'm impressed. Luffy? Mandalay asked, surprised. Is this the same kind of training he went through? I can't imagine it. Oh, cat lady what's up? Luffy said to the new arrivals with a wave and a carefree smile. You did all this by yourself. Pixie Bob asked before licking her lips. I like that. Come here she then proceeded to pounce on Luffy. Luffy was then showered with kisses from the 30-year-old heroine. Hey, hey what are you doing? That tickle shisha shishi stop Luffy he managed to get out between his giggling. Everybody around him just watched with a sweat drop. Anyway, I already called our school nurse, so she should be here any minute. Until then, I'll get everyone back to the cabin. As Awa explained the situation. I see, I'll also help. Pixie Bob, Ragdoll, and Tiger will help the other class with their training. Mandalay instructed the other members of her group. Understood. Get ready kids now, your training starts. Tiger said with a menacing glare toward Class 1B, and they were scared but also grateful that they wouldn't have to fight Luffy. 
Wait, Tetsutetsu also needs help, Kendo said as she came back to her class with an arm around Tetsutetsu. How many times do I gotta tell you? I'm fine, a weak little headbutt won't knock me out that easily. Tetsutetsu said in a loud voice. Oh yeah? Then why is blood coming out of your nose? It's clearly broken, Kendo scolded her classmate. It's fine, I can live without it, Tetsutetsu said, and in response, he received a quick karate chop to his neck. Don't worry, we'll take care of him. Mandalay said in a kind voice, before turning to Luffy and Pixie Bob. Pixie Bob leaves Straw Hat alone and come help the other class. Yes ma'am Pixie Bob said as she saluted her and began to take the class to another space. Straw Hat come and help us move your friends to the cabin. Mandalay said to Luffy as she picked Ida off of a cracked boulder. Yosh Luffy said. And so, little by little, they managed to get everyone back to the cabin and plop them in their beds. Evening. Ugh, I feel like complete crap. The guy who can make air into a solid said. I'm not gonna bother with learning his name but at least, I'm better off than them. Right now, all of the students were outside, all completely exhausted. Class 1 on the other hand, was beyond exhausted and with several broken bones per person. The only real difference between the two groups was that one was eating while the other was still standing and waiting for food. Now remember what I said. We're not serving you food anymore, Pixie Bob said as she pointed to a whole bunch of raw vegetables and uncooked meat. If you guys wanna eat, you gotta cook your own food Ragdoll said, standing near Pixie Bob. Starting with curry. But what about class 1A? This is clear favoritism and I won't stand for it. Monomo proclaimed loudly. Kendo was genuinely impressed that he still had the energy to take out on the other class. The thing is, we normally would have made them cook their own food. Ragdoll said. But most of them can't walk or move their hands without being in extreme pain, so we made an exception. Pixie Bob continued, everybody in class 1B either sulked or understood. The one in between was Tetsutetsu, a bit annoyed that he didn't get his meal after his fight with Luffy, but understood why. Okay Momo, say ah Luffy said as he got a spoonful of curry and guided it toward Momo's mouth. Ah. Momo opened her mouth and closed it around the spoon, after Luffy took the spoon out of her mouth, she began eating as slowly as she could with her cracked jaw. I don't even need to say how this looks, right? Jiru said as she slowly guided her spoon to her mouth. You see, normally I would care. But I'm too tired to care at this point. Momo said after eating, her manners did not allow her to speak with a face full of food, but it did allow her to be spoon-fed by Luffy. Luffy, who was giving Momo a spoonful of curry and eating three for himself. Recovery girl's quirk is really something, isn't it? It made us beyond exhausted, but she said by tomorrow we should be good as new. Kirishima said as he bent backward to drink a cup of juice. I don't think I can handle another training session with Luffy. Izuku said and was surprised when he heard like 15 different sames. Shishishishi. Sorry guys, my bad. I guess I went a little too hard didn't I? Luffy said as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Say ah, you guess? Tsu asked as she had to turn her whole bandaged and splintered body to face Luffy. I said I was sorry Luffy apologized for like the tenth time. He was even holding himself back from devouring the delicious food in front of him. Can't they see the sacrifices he's making? There is nothing you need to apologize for. Iida said, for the first time in his life actually being forced to use his arms robotically. If this makes us even a quarter as strong as you, then we'll do it, yeah. Izuku said, soon a bunch of other students agreed. Bakugut scared, but internally agreed. I still don't want to do it. Yuraka said as she struggled to get her spoon to her mouth. I mean, I plan on becoming a rescue hero, not a combat one. What type of hero you want to become isn't important. As was suddenly said from behind the table, slightly startling the gravity girl. This is a training camp, you are here to train to become a future hero. It doesn't matter what type of hero you become, as long as you make it back home alive, you'll be fine. Please don't joke about stuff like that. Mina said with a tear in her eye. She saw in the corner of her eye an elderly person appears with a cup of tea in her hand. How's everybody doing? Recovery girl asked the students who were eating and all they could say was, Meh, we are doing quite alright thank you. Iida said as he robotically fed himself. I'm sorry I couldn't do anything more, if only somebody knew how to hold back. Recovery girl said as she sent a menacing glare towards Luffy. I said I was sorry Luffy was wondering how many times is he going to need to apologize, he thought that once you said it you have to be forgiven, but apparently it wasn't like that. Say ah, sigh. It's fine Sonny, it's better now rather than later right? Recovery girl said as she took a seat near Azawa. I have to say, I'm a bit surprised, I thought you would have filled my head with complaints and stuff like that. Azawa said to recovery girl after a couple of seconds of silence. But you barely said a word to me since you came. I can't really complain about something I knew that was going to happen. My only regret is that I didn't come with you. Recovery girl said as she drank from her tea. Well, now you're here, and we're going to need your help. Azawa said as he looked at Luffy who almost yanked Momo's teeth out along with her spoon. 
Desperately. Huh, Greenie? Where are you going? Luffy said as he smelled the tray of food in Izuku's hands. I just, I think Koda hasn't eaten anything so I'm going to give this to him. Izuku said as he limped over to Koda's cave. So hair up, I was thinking. Turu said, an invisible bandage covering a part of her face. Can we please do something else tomorrow, please I beg you. Yeah I totes agree Mina said. I don't think this beautiful body can handle another session. Oh don't worry, for tomorrow we'll be training hockey Luffy said with a fist in the air. Say ah, uh, oh bogue. Momo's Vasipam and Dread were stopped by a spoonful of curry. Cool, cool, is it going to be easier than what we went through today? Kaminari asked Hopiful. Oh yeah way easier, Luffy said it from his perspective, as in, it would be easy for him. This made everyone breathe out a sigh of relief. That's just a straight up lie. Momo thought and thought again for a second before arriving at a conclusion. A, I'm not going to spoil their moods. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.